football on NBC. Presented by Visa. The Irish have wins over Michigan and Ball State. Vandy has beaten Middle Tennessee and Nevada. There are two and others in South Bend on this 81 degree hot and humid Saturday afternoon. A moment ago in the Notre Dame locker room, a very animated Brian Kelly getting his guys ready. the locker room and heads down to the field down the steps their personal moment with those two iconic signs every guy's got a different routine every player bringing the message and the message Brian Kelly brought in that locker room was unmistakable he knows this team didn't have the fire he wanted to see against Ball State so as the head coach he's making sure that they are mentally ready to start this game they are physically ready it was a much more physical week of practice for Notre Dame this past week and here come the Irish Defensive coordinator before taking this job five years ago. His quarterback, senior Kyle Shermer, took over as the starter late his freshman year. He is the son of the New York Giants head coach, Pat Shermer. Emotional day for Notre Dame's defensive coordinator. For more on that, it's back to Catherine. Yeah, Mike, it's certainly a special day for Clark Lee. He grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. He went to Vanderbilt University and he actually played fullback for the Commodores. His dad, his uncle, his sister, all Vandy alums. But a 13 year old Lee came here to Notre Dame Stadium in 1995. The only other time Vanderbilt played here with his father, Clark Lee Sr. The younger Lee sported Notre Dame gear that he had asked for for Christmas the year before. Clark Lee Sr. told me today, we're sitting in the Vanderbilt cheering section at Notre Dame Stadium and my son is wearing Irish gear, but it was a great chance, he said, for father-son bonding. He also told me that his son wrote an English paper in eighth grade stating that he would like to live in South Bend one day. He went to bed every night before his middle and high school games watching the movie. Rudy, his dad, told me he's going to be very emotional today, nervous, anxious, and he said for the first time in his life, Mike, he's rooting against his alma mater. And with good reason. He's done a really good job with the Heisman Trophy winner, Doug Flutie. Uh, the Michigan game lingered a little bit into last week. What about this week? Any carryover from that Ball State game last week? I think so. And what the uh, offensive coordinator Chip Long said, Notre Dame's offensive coordinator, we were soft. And I can't wait to get back out on the field and get the stink off. So the bottom line was they weren't physical enough, they weren't intense enough. They got to match the intensity of a couple of weeks ago and play with a sense of urgency. How do they do that today? I think it starts with their quarterback. It starts with Brandon Wimbush. He really didn't want to take off and run with the ball last week. I think you have to get him involved with design quarterback runs and tell him to get into the flow of the game so that he regains his confidence right away and starts turning it loose. All right, we mentioned the other quarterback a couple of times. What can you tell me about Kyle Schirmer? We know the pedigree. What about the player? I'll tell you what, he's played a lot of football. He's experienced. He's smart. He's been in the same system for four years. He knows this offense like the back of his hand. Great checking at the line of scrimmage, getting out of bad plays or good plays. The pass protections, the whole game very rarely makes bad decisions. They asked Vanderbilt's folks, are you intimidated to come to Notre Dame? They said, no, we play in the SEC all the time. And they're right about that, but this is still a very special opportunity as they come to South Bend and take on the Fighting Irish on this Saturday afternoon. Strong is back. The Irish won the toss and will receive. And we are underway here 
in South Bend to be brought out by Michael Young from a couple of yards deep. He was captured Armstrong, and he can't get out to the 20-yard line as he is brought down by Gil Barksdale for the Commodores. Here comes the Notre Dame offense. You're going to see a couple of running backs, Tony Jones Jr. in there. To start, Miles Boykin coming off a big game. Six catches last week against Ball State. Brother Cole come at the tight end is out for the Irish with an ankle injury. His offensive line needs to improve its play, especially on the right side. We'll be watching Robert Hainsey, 72, very closely as this afternoon goes on. All in front of Brandon Wimbush for the Irish, getting his 15th career start. First game is a turn the corner run for a first down and more to Tony Jones. Josh Smith makes the tackle and Jones takes it out to the 37 yard line. Notre Dame likes to go quick and has had quick strike scores in the first two games this season. Jones on the edge got a nice block from Alizé Mack the tight end to take it to the 45. A couple yards pick up the first down. Doug, you talked about Wimbush. He didn't look like he wanted to take off and run last week. I'll be watching that closely this week. Yeah, he had some opportunities where he drifted out of the pocket, moved around, and kept his eyes up the field and just didn't have that intensity to him. He is the best running back on this team when he takes off and runs. Jones still in the back. First throw is Wimbush firing. Two and open chase. Quite cool for the first down. Into Bandy territory, the 38. The Commodore's best covered corner, Jawan Williams, the tackle. He's looking up the seam initially. I thought he was going to throw the seam ball, but he throws outside. Williams slips. Going after him, comes up, makes the tackle. If he hadn't have slipped, he might have been able to make a play on the ball. They throw this opening drive. They'll run by Wimbush to the 29-yard line, yard shy of the first down and their name has been physical watching the push up front on these first four plays. Well this is encouraging from a Notre Dame offensive standpoint right there getting Brandon Winbush's legs involved in this game. Getting short and it's a run with Jones. First down to the 15 yard line. Ladarius Wiley the best safety for Vandy made the tackle. Alex Bars at left guard, Sam Mustaver at center. They've been the strong suit of this offensive line all year so far for Notre Dame, and both of them key blocks on that run. Interesting here, they empty the backfield. Three receivers to the left, two to the right, until Jones comes back next to Wimbush. Up and open, looking to take off. He'll only gain a yard to the 14-yard line. Louis Vecchio, who's a transfer from Penn, joins Dare Odangbo on the tackle. Vandy trying to they, they do a lot of rotate they sub a lot of people they're going to try to get some subs in here against Chip Long's offense which is keeping the personnel static and going fast on this opening drive. Wimbush end zone shot a lot of contact with Miles Boykin and the flag is thrown. Boykin working on Joan Williams uses that 6-4 frame to bring the first flag of this afternoon. Our referee today is Trey Blake. Defense, number eight. The field was in the end zone. My rule was always playing back at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Williams is a big, strong, physical defensive back, but so is Boykin as a receiver. Little hand fighting going on, and Williams just grabs a hold, and down goes Boykin. Uh, he had a great game last week. We had a chance to talk to him this week. It'll be Jones running to that right side, and he will be stopped for no game. It's a three down, three four defense for Vanderbilt. So you get very active linebackers. One of them, Jordan Griffin, made the tackle. And Chip Long wants to see be able to power push the ball down there. Wimbush out, Ian Book in. And the last three snaps Ian Book has been in, he has handed off for touchdowns. They're the only three snaps he's played this year. Jafar Armstrong is checked in as the running back. No way Book's going to go four for four, is he? Oh, yes, he is. From the two, and it's Armstrong. No. Nope. He is stopped. Dio Odangbo, Odangbo, the brother of Dario, starts on the other side. Dio's a sophomore, made the tackle. Even going back, Book had a touchdown on four of his last five plays up to this one. Run on the right side, just too many bodies. The double team got got messed up. One defender took out two offensive blockers on the play. So Book will stay, and Brock Wright, the tight end, comes in at fullback on third and goal, and there's movement. 
Left side of that Notre Dame line was moving. They brought an extra offensive tackle too. False start. Offense. Number 69. Five yard penalty. Third down. Here's Aaron Banks, the extra tackle who was in the game. I really don't see the need. I think down the road, Brian Kelly believes he's going to need Ian Book in certain situations. So he wants to get him in and out of the game in these situations. But I really didn't see the Third need to put him on the field. And also with the legs of Brandon Wimbush in the red zone, it's a great offensive weapon. It had worked up until this point. But all he'd done is hand the ball off from guys running the end zone. Avery Davis is in the game for the Irish. He's the closest receiver to Wimbush on the left side. Third and goal. They pressure Wimbush. He got away. Wimbush looking end zone. Incomplete. A lot of traffic as Chase Claypool was the crosser. But Vanderbilt facing first and goal from the two comes up with three stops and a field goal attempt coming. A very athletic Josh Smith coming off the edge and this is what ben Brandon Wimbush does so well. Gets out of the pocket on the move tries to squeeze one in goes incomplete. Jordan Griffin 40 that linebacker for Vandy got over there may have gotten a piece to prevent the touchdown completion and here is Justin Yoon chance to move even higher on Notre Dame's all time scoring list today. From 25 yards. And the Irish has scored on the opening drive for the third straight game. But Vanderbilt has to be hardened that they limited Brian Kelly's offense to a field goal. 3 0 just underway here. Everywhere you want to be. By Jersey Mike Subs, a uh, sub above. By Coca Cola, taste the field. And by Go RV, find your away. Away they come from all over the Midwest. Folks make it uh, their bucket list trip. A lot of folks also made the trip from Tessie. Perhaps come see a game for the first time in the house that Rocky built. Notre Dame Stadium. Jonathan Dorr has knocked one out of bounds in each of the first two games. Jamari Wakefield back deep to receive. The redshirt sophomore for the Commodores. Looking into a tough sun. Wakefield had trouble making a clean catch at the two. And will be hit at the 50. The flag is down. On this side of the field, the near side, running about the 29 yard line as the players were coming down on coverage. And if you see a kick as you watch to your left as this game gets started, you're going to watch guys squinting into that sun. Doing the return, holding. Receiving team number 84. That penalty is 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. That's Sam Dobbs, the backup tight end for Vandy. So it'll be a long field for the Commodores. By the way, that was your starting linebacker from Tranquil coming in there and delivering the left. And that sun is going to be an issue for a while when the wall is kicked from out right to left. There's Tranquil. He and Tavon Coney, the linebackers, have been on the field every snap. This Notre Dame defense faced 97 plays. If you had three penalties, 100 snaps last week. And they played them all. The senior Kyle Shermer will take over from the eight yard line for his Vandy offense. Scans and throws complete. It's a short game. It'll be marked down at the 10 yard line. Willie Gilman with the tackle of Sam Dobbs. Let's uh, give you this Vanderbilt offense and the guys up front. Three backs going to rotate through. Best pass catcher is Kalaja Lipscomb. He's 14 of the 33 completions this year. Returning all five up front, a couple of their backups as well. So they've got experience up there. Just in school, the left tackle would be considered the best of that front five. Terry Bassingame. Bassingame is the back as Shermer rolls it and throws to the sideline. It is caught. Kalaja Lipscomb inbounds. And the catch is made for the first down in a game of 17 in front of Jalen Elliott. What a great throw. He really wasn't open. But Shermer throws the ball flat. Oh, flat oh, the right foot was out of bounds. But he put that ball in the only spot it could be. Lower away and make the receiver. Lipscomb come back to the ball and catch it on the sideline. Very quiet feet in the pocket on first down. Sherman is very comfortable in the pocket. They bumped down to look at this. You saw the right foot out of bounds. Where was the left foot would be the question when the catch was made. Was that right foot already down when he caught it? So they will take a look upstairs. Joe Ryder 
The replay official buzzing down to the field to stop it and take another look at it. Right along the sideline with you here. It looks like that uh, foot was on the white as he catches the ball. Terry McCauley, our rules analyst, is up here in the booth with us. And Terry, let's take a look at it together here. All right, you see the right foot's out of bounds before he even touches the football, so that's an incomplete pass. See how simple that was? There Cut and go. dry. <laughs> Cut and dry. You know, we have to go to Terry for the easy ones, too, though. <laughs> that, would be not, that is nice. That is nice to <laughs> but, do that. But that I was the shortest that. explanation <laughs> in history right there. Bang. <laughs> Well, and I don't know why we don't have the ball back in play already. <laughs> team, but I don't want to, come on, and the go. teams are huddling up on the sidelines. Yep. You know, Terry worked three Super Bowls, 17 years. You've seen him on our Sunday night football games. Uh, a decade as well, coordinating the Big East and the AC, the American Athletic Conference officials as well. So Terry's been a part of both college and pro ball every weekend for the last decade. Review, the rule is on the field is confirmed. It will be third down. Trey Blake's uh, new receipt, new official, I should say, to the ACC and working Conference USA before. First time he's working an Irish game, so we'll set the ball back at the nine. It'll be third and nine coming up. And I have number nine and number 42 in the pass rush. Nine for the Irish. David Hayes, 42. Julian O'Quarrie. They are on the back side. Needing to get to the 18, four-man rush, Shermer throws, complete. The catch and run will move the chains. It is Elijah Lipscomb again, out to the 21-yard line. So a pick up of a dozen, Jalen Elliott, Houston Griffin, the tackle. Nice little pivot route, takes it up, starts in, presses the defender and spins back out. Ball is on time, in rhythm, right in the chest. Look how firm he stands in the pocket. Shermer has quiet feet in the pocket, meaning he's not panicky. And this guy, Lipscomb and him, they have great timing. They do back shoulder throws. A good report. We see Kyle's story, his background. This is 31st consecutive start, 33rd of his career. Blessing game with the run. And the other 23, Drew Trank, will, will stop him. You know, his dad is obviously so involved with the NFL as the Giants head coach. His uncle, Fritz Shermer, was a great defensive coordinator in the league. So. This guy's been around football since he was born. So there's that all the natural things you would say about the coach of a son. Son of a coach, I should say. Here's his throw complete to the tight end Pickney. And Jared Pickney took it to the 40-yard line and a first down. Dougie has all those fundamentals very solid and sees the field so well. Being a coach's son, you understand the importance of knowing the offense inside and out. We get a little real route from Pickney from a tight end position, and he slips through because of the play action. The defense came up. Pickney's a big play receiver as a tight end. But the importance of getting in and out of the right play, all that stuff, is he understands it. Two first downs for Vandy. This is their opening drive of the game. In the 40, one of the three backs they will use. Blasting game gets six against this Notre Dame defense that faced 19 plays on the opening drive last week. Julian O'Quara has joined the rotation of four defensive ends. Very constant pass rush in this group. We told you Coney and Trank will play all the snaps. They also play them at a very high level. They've been good as well as Bilal this year, the Rover. In the back end, we'll highlight Jalen Elliott. He was the highlight player last week. Two interceptions. Safeties didn't have an interception all last year. Clark Lee saw the back end guys get into the big play column. And Catherine told you the story of the former Vandy fullback coaching against his alma mater today. Here's Keyshawn Vaughn trying to get to the edge. And one of those linebackers, Drew Tranquil, gets over to make the tackle. Drew Tranquil made a lot of plays, and he's at reacting fast. He's right here, 23. Down the line and chasing this down from behind. Now, Vaughn's got some suddenness to him. He's a slasher, a one-cut one kind of guy with explosiveness to him. Third and two, and the Irish were a timeout taken here by Vandy. The Irish were too bend but don't break mode last week. So many third downs converted by Ball State, but very good in the red zone. Obviously getting the opponent off the field a little bit quicker. Part of the conversation this week, but a different opponent than Derek Mason, Kyle Shermer, and Vandy. 
Download the NBC Sports app to watch thousands of live sporting events. Stream for free with your NBC SN subscription. For details, visit NBCSports.com slash live. Word of Life Bureau. Go to the Hesper Library here on the campus of Notre Dame. Out of the Vandy called timeout. Third and a couple on this opening Commodore drive. And Shermer is pressured. The throw is complete, but no first down. Drew Tranquil comes to clean it all up as Notre Dame brought the heat and will set up fourth down. Slot receiver coming, and Drew Tranquil he comes from left to right. Drew Tranquil just closes in a hurry. You complete a pass on third and three, you think you're getting the first down, but Drew just closes the gap. Sure tackler, short of the first down. And credit Tavon Coney with the pressure. He was unblocked, so Clark Lee dialing up the right stuff there. It's Chris Fink back for Parker Tomey's punt. Graduate student. Undergrad at Columbia. Grad work at Vandy. Smart dude. Fink's going to let it bounce, and they will kill it. Down at the six yard line. So it'll be a long field for the Irish. Well, Music City, it has the SEC, but it has uh, plenty of other sports as well. Remember the early success when the first national, the Tennessee Titans, got there, got to Super Bowl 34, the dramatic game that they played. I don't know if Catherine Tappan's ears have uh, stopped ringing after the Stanley Cup final against the Penguins that the Preds played last year. What a scene that is. And Vandy's been there for a while, since 1890, and not the same success as the other sports programs there in that amazingly fast growing city. Notre Dame takes over from its own six yard line. Tony Jones got a good block from Fink. Jones on the edge, gain of 14 to the 20 yard line. 25, Josh Smith defensively came off the edge and closed down and took the inside route. Watch 25. He goes inside too quick. Boom, the corner's gotten and off and running. He has to set an edge and turn that play in. Jones already 55 yards on five carries. Here's a six that will only gain a yard and a half or so. This is just the third meeting between these teams. The Irish went down to Nashville to make part of a home and home in the mid 90s, 95 and 96. But it's the second year we've seen an SEC team come up here. Remember, Georgia was a week two opponent in what was a terrific ball game last season. Wimbush pressured on second and nine, completes it. That was a Mack, the tight end. They go low to knock him down. He's a yard shy of the first down. Zaire Jones, suspended for the first two Vandy games, returns to the field and makes an impression right away. Well, that was a very encouraging throw by Brandon Wimbush. One of those shorter throws that he's been struggling with, but he also had a free rusher right in his face, stepped into the throw and de delivered a strike. Wimbush comes out. Ian Book comes in for third and one. 29 it'll be booked to roll it and throw it complete and it's Brock Wright for the first down at the 38 yard line so Wright comes in and gets his first career reception primarily used as a blocker well every time Ian Book has come in they've run the ball so they go play action little boot action easy throw under control too coming out and now Ian Book when he gets on the corner also can take off and run a little bit Tight end is taking low hits from Vanderbilt safeties on back to back plays. The speed of Jafar Armstrong. He runs right close to the first down. Give a yard shot. The mark with the 47. The converted wide receiver now a running back. 28 carries thus far this year. Third straight game. No Dexter Williams for the Irish. So it's Tony Jones Jr., Armstrong. Avery Davis is the backs. Wimbush gets away from a sack. Puts it up sideline. Boy can try to come back forward. Incomplete. Incomplete. There's a lot of hand fighting over there. Boykin came very close to being out of bounds before he ended up trying to make that catch. In any case, it's third in the yard. Wimbush wanted to throw this go route from the very beginning, but he gets pressure. But watch his strength in the pocket. Little slip, tuck the shoulder, reload, and let it loose. Boykin makes a great play on the ball, but his left foot way out of bounds and comes back in to make the catch. 
by Odangbo with the pressure. Third and one. They bring Mack down to block, and it's a first down run for DeFar Armstrong. Jordan Griffin on the tackle. We'll give you a couple of names. Notre Dame going fast. Let's tell you who's playing defense. Vandy. 3 4 defense. Odangbo's on the edge. In 3 4, you go outside linebackers. Charles Wright's the best pass rusher. He'll get a lot of attention. Nine sacks last year. Second team all SEC. Joan Williams, SEC level corner, 6'3. Good length in his game. First down to Rene and Wimbush with time. Incomplete. Try to loft it to Chase Claypool. Couldn't get there. Zaire Jones on the coverage. Notre Dame player coming off the field, shaken up. It's Alize Mack running to the sideline. Jason Tarver, he's in charge of the defense. He was in the NFL in the Bay Area with the Raiders and the Niners. He comes back to reconnect with Derek Mason. Those two were co defensive coordinators at Stanford. Mason was calling the defense for Vandy his first four years as a head coach. Now Tarver's doing that. Second and ten, Windbush hangs in. Throws it beautifully to Jones. Tony Jones, first down. Out of bounds of the 27. Is Vanderbilt secondary, brings the heat. They hit, but it's a gain of 24. It's a free release for Tony Jones. He's got a little shoulder issue going there, but he releases in a hurry, and there's free pressure. Boom, balls out. Nice job by Brandon Windbush. Knowing he was hot, had to get rid of the ball. Tony Jones came off a little sore. Yeah, I mentioned they hit both Mack and Jones on the sideline being looked at. So running for the moment is Armstrong. Good elusiveness by Armstrong to get to the 22. A solid first down run. Not naturally a running back, Doug. We're watching to see if he picks up some of those little running back idiosyncrasies as he learns the position. And as a receiver, he runs a little upright and high, and he's learning a lot of little of those, those traits that are going to keep him healthy. And he's in for the moment for Jones. Wimbush, nothing open, looking to take off. Trying to turn the corner here. Wow, he got away from would be tackle Isaiah Jones and gets to the 20 yard line. It'll be third and three. But on a play like that, Doug, you see why Brian Kelly says seven might be their best running back. Yeah, he might have had an opportunity at a quick throw, didn't like it. He really didn't have to flush right away, but he didn't have a throw, and that's why he took off. And then no, he's so elusive. He's strong lower body. He cuts on a dime. Nick Wishers, the tight end in motion. It's third and three. Screen set up for Chris Fink. Can he get there in the sideline? Yes. First down, Fink at the 12. Some good blocking, especially by Wisher. That senior tight end moves the chains after a gain of eight. Well, you can see the punt returner in him here. He's got a free defender running right at him one on one, slips him at full speed so he can continue to get upfield. And I kind of like the little sidearm sling out there to him from Wimbush. In the 12, sling again, Fink again. Not going anywhere. Donovan Sheffield travels from the other side, makes back to back tackles on the Notre Dame wide receiver. Sheffield fought through Claypool and directly to the ball and made a great defensive play there. It's the second Notre Dame drive. They picked up nine first downs and almost 150 yards in this opening quarter. Corners will get tired in a hurry of having to come up and make hits. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. It was going middle, and Fink could not hang on. And that's so rare for a guy who usually gets an A-plus on most every assignment. It's a nice little read by Brandon Wimbush. Everything drifted off. Here comes Fink on the under round. The ball's in a good spot right at his face. You know, maybe a touch on the back shoulder. But Chris Fink does not drop that ball, ever. He's the one guy that makes no mistakes. Watch that right side of the Notre Dame offensive line. Had a Kramer and Hainsey, 78 and 72. Hold up in pass protection. Third and 10. Wimbush sees space, takes off. Got the 10. Got the five. Got the touchdown. Contained. Watch the right side. Hainsey closes this down as they, they stun it to the inside. No one else came out for contain. 
Winbush felt it, drifted to the right, and took off. And that's why he's so dangerous. He wanted to get into the end zone. He runs tough. He makes so many big plays with his legs. May want to take a look at this upstairs to see if he got in. And they will. Usually when that defensive end stunts to the inside, there's somebody looping back out, and there was no one looping out for contain. Let's see, Terry McCauley with us. Hand is okay. Where's the ball when the first body part comes down? We'll bring in Terry. But well, we need a down line shot to know for sure. Rear end appears to be the first to touch. Where's the ball? I don't think there's enough to reverse. This should stand as a touchdown. It's close. And again, that hand still doesn't count as body part down, so buy some an extra look here. Here's that down the line look Terry you were talking yep. about. Elbow where's the ball when the elbow hits that's what we're looking for. So that elbow will be the point that they look at upstairs as they slow it down. Here's that look Terry that they're going to go back and forth. This is it. At. So we'll freeze it when the elbow hits and we kind of lose sight of the football. Uh, not the wrist. The wrist doesn't count. Not so you go a little bit further. And we get a stance. Yeah, they'll say stand so it's a touchdown. It's so interesting. Like, the forearm counts but once you get above the wrist bone. Correct. Is when it's when you start to say okay that's a body part. Correct. Same with the ankle. The ankle doesn't put you down but the shin does. Right, so, so grab your wrist bone. And look down at the rest of your hand. That's not a body part when it comes to football, right? That's correct. It's, it's, it's part of the hand. Yeah, it's a great business you run over there. <laughs> <laughs> we make it up as we go along. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> 14 career rushing touchdowns, uh, rushing touchdowns last year, which was a career record in one season for a Notre Dame quarterback. 16 now for his entire Irish career. Speaking of career lists, Justin Yu moving up to third all time in the scoring list. He's got four points. How about four for four on third downs on that drive. Cap it off with a 12 yard Winbush touchdown run. Good start for the home team. Getting closer, legendary hospital with a revolutionary doctor who's going to break the rules to heal the system. New Amsterdam's only 10 days away. Tuesdays this fall. Look forward to it. Right here on NBC. Right here on the Notre Dame campus. What a day it is. Cloudy skies. Complete contrast to what our friends in the Carolinas are dealing with. Anyone watching in that area, or so many of you around the country, with family there, affected by the hurricane and tropical storm Florence. We're thinking of all the folks, the good folks, down in that part of our country. Ten O. There's a high, tough to catch kick caught on the run by Jamari Wakefield. Who got out to the 32 yard line? Jordan Jenmark Heath covering and makes the tackle. Final 54 seconds of the opening quarter. We'll have it for you after this. You see the background of Vandy's head coach, Derek Mason, some time in the NFL, then first hired by Jim Harbaugh, but became co defensive coordinator at Stanford when David Shaw took over. And Harbaugh went to the NFL. And after James Franklin's good run, getting Vandy to a couple of bowl games, Franklin went to Penn State. And Mason was hired in Nashville. This is now his fifth season. Still looking for his first winning season at Vandy. He's trying to get a top 10 win for the first time. 0 7 against top 10 teams. Final minute of this opening quarter of the second drive begins with Ken Johnson coming around the edge and saying hello to Colin Curry. The junior from Detroit Harrison High School with a loss on the play of six. Dream does a great job of maintaining leverage and staying outside and turning this thing in. There was a little crease. Maybe could have been turned up north and south. Dream keeps, it, keeps his leverage, plays off the block, turns the play in, makes the tackle. Sam Dobbs, one of the three or four tight ends you'll see for Vandy today, couldn't make the play. Kareem was the National Defensive Player of the Week against Michigan. Off another solid game last week against Ball State. Likely the final play of this opening quarter. Keyshawn Vaughn trying to get his balance. Did a good job, too. Got out of Jalen Elliott's tackle. Got to the 33. And that will end the first frame here in South Bend. Notre Dame Tech.
Vanderbilt, nothing our score after one. We're back at Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Visa. Derek Mason's team only getting the ball for the second time here. Brian Hill, his team has scored on the first two drives. 10-0 Notre Dame over Vanderbilt. Our second quarter here from South Bend, Mike Tirico. Doug Flitty, Catherine Tappan, Terry McCauley, our rules analyst, Chris Sims with us as well. Glad you're on board. Third consecutive Notre Dame Saturday here on NBC. Irish hit the road next week for Wake Forest. And Stanford in here two weeks from tonight. Could be a top ten matchup. Schirmer is hit. Ball is out. It's free. And it's recovered by his offensive guard Cole Clemens. But Jerry Tillery is having a terrific season with the pressure to force the punt. He, Jerry Tillery is a big human being. He's in the middle, over the nose. Luke fights through. I'll tell you, he can't block. His favorite move is that club move we were watching on film. Yes. He just slaps people aside, but he goes after the ball with the right arm. You know, you're going to make. The, he makes sure he's making the tackle, but goes after the ball. And that's a heck of a fumble recovery, by the way, by Clemens. Losses of 11 and six on that drive caused by the Notre Dame front line on defense good kick here 50 yards Fink got it at the 28 I don't know how he got under that would be tackle he's still somehow on his feet and did a lot for no return speaking of doing a lot Brandon Wimbush so far done he's doing a good job he's gotten a lot of pressure and made some very accurate throws on the move or with pressure stepping up and avoiding pressure throwing on the this was an accurate throw he even dropped down side on but it did get tipped away but the ball was on the money and again for the guy in his face steps into the throw and delivers a strike these are things he hasn't done well and he's doing them well today again a free rusher in his face in the strike so the shorter throws have given him fits mm -hmm. and it's come down sometimes to mechanics but he really seems to be on target with the underneath throws. The one ball was dropped by Chris Fink, actually. That was a, a well thrown ball. Legal substitution, offense, 12 players in formation. Five yard penalty, first down. Chase Claypool ran off the field as Notre Dame had not just broken the huddle, but got to the line of scrimmage. So they broke the huddle with 12. And that'll cost him five. Claypool is often on special teams for the Irish. It's 87, Michael Young. He's the receiver at the top of the screen. Out there, perhaps in Claypool's spot at the moment. Also, Kevin Austin, number four, the freshman, bottom of the screen for Notre Dame. They run it on the inside here, and it's out to the 30 yard line for Jafar Armstrong, working hard on that carry. The other aspect of Wimbush is that he's running the ball a little bit, four attempts for 24 yards and a touchdown, and that, I think, gets him into the flow. You know, mentally, physically, break a sweat. Take it down, watch the other scores go by. As Wimbush goes by, the would be tackler gets within a yard of the first down as he goes down to the 37 yard line. That first score, score you saw, Stanford, a team that'll be here in two weeks. For what could be a very big end of September game. It's gonna be third and two, and the Irish are gonna be stopped here on this third and short at the defensive front. Tay Daly also the safety close to the line of scrimmage snuffs out Armstrong and that's gonna be a very quick three and out for the Notre Dame offense Kenny Aver also came off the edge mm -hmm. and he's flattened down to ch chase that there was a blitz coming off the left side There were just too many bodies too many bodies to block So Tyler Newsom Will kick it away for Notre Dame Rocket shot. All the way home. Too far. 63 yards. Still net 43 with the touchback. And Bandy will get it at the 20. Two and a half into this second quarter. Guys, one of the very proud Vandy alums. A lot of Vandy folks making the trip. Should we mention our director, Pierre? Absolutely. We finest. got one in the truck. That's right. One of Vandy's Comedy. finest. Love when schools that don't come to South Bend often do. So many folks do come to be a part of the experience here at Notre Dame Stadium. 
Third drive starts at the 20 and third of the last four plays with a negative result. The Irish all over Keyshawn Vaughn. Adio Kandiji among the many on the tech. Kandiji on the inside fighting through. Beats the block of the center, can't be reached. Heinish. 41 was actually the one that, that penetrated. Kandiji gets there at the end along with Jonathan Bonner, but you mentioned Kurt Heinish. The Irish without Myron Tagovailoa Mosa, who injured his foot a couple of weeks ago, still getting a good bit of production from those defensive tackle spots. Vandy going backwards, second and 13, set up a screen, calm down that rush. Keyshawn Vaughn only going to get a couple of yards. Julian Love, who we'll visit with at halftime, joins Okandiji on the tackle. Third down coming up. Vaughn makes the most out of everything he gets here. I mean, it wasn't a clean screen, but he makes the first guy miss, hits a gap, and gains yards. Catherine told you the great story of Clark Lee, the Vandy alum, was a walk on there at the top of our broadcast. There's Clark closest to you. His defense so far, two first downs allowed, 13 plays, 30 yards. And a pass rush that's on fire right now. Third and 11 for Shermer. It's from middle, and it is incomplete. It is love on the coverage along with Jalen Elliott. Kalijah Lipscomb was the intended receiver. Didn't look back for the ball, but it will bring up fourth down. Boy, oh, sorry, he's inside here. Julian Love stays underneath because he knows he has deep help, stays in position. And the ball, they're great at this back shoulder throw. So Love knows to stay under the throw. Lipscomb looking for the back shoulder, didn't have a chance. It's a frustrating one for fans because receivers are so good coming back at the ball. He really got in the way of his opportunity to come back. Parker Tomey will punt it to Chris Fink. Tough on the run in the sun, so Fink will fair catch it. 47 yard punt with no return. It'll be Irish ball at the 35. Their defense set the tone. And we push the offense up 10. Executive producer Robert Zemeckis on the line because Doug Flutie loves the story. Their flight disappeared five years ago. Today it landed. They haven't aged a day. Flutie wants to know. He wants on. It's manifest. Get ready for it Monday. It's this fall coming up. I think I figured it out. Doc Brown and his DeLorean are on the plane. <laughs> you have to tune in for a week away. Monday's on NBC this fall. Wimbush takes the snap. And look to run. Did not go very far. Loss of a yard on that one. The Irish just went three and out on the last drive. This is the fourth drive. Their offensive line coach is Jeff Quinn. It took over for Harry Heastand, who went to the Chicago Bears. Quinn, former head coach at the University of Buffalo, was here the last couple of years as an analyst, taking over a group that lost two top ten picks in the last NFL draft. It's on the edge of Kevin Austin, the freshman receiver. He'll be out of bounds after a game. Of four. Doug, what, what do you think so far of the first two plus games with this Notre Dame offensive line? They've struggled. Uh, Alex Bars at left guard has been a strong point. Sam Mustafer at center, not bad. But they're turning people loose, and they're turning people loose today. And Brandon Wimbush is going into athlete mode and, and just kind of making some plays on his own and taking some hits. And yeah, there are going to be free rushers because of blitzes, but you want that free rusher to be the outside guy, not a guy coming up in one of the gaps. Third and seven here. Here come five to rush. This is good protection. It's a shot downfield, and it's incomplete. Safety was coming over to try to deter Michael Young. Having nothing of it. Joe 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 Williams. And Zaire Jones with good coverage. And the Vandy fans cheer as they go three and out again. Protection is excellent here. Bring the extra rusher, five-man rush, good pickup. Step into the throw and let it go, but Brandon Mubush eyed the throw, allows the safety to come over and make a play on it. Incomplete. Those are cool. Got to two. hold that safety with your eyes, keep him in the center of the field. No, absolutely. Those are two really good defenders working on there. Vandy had that taken care of. Newsom's kick is a long one. They're going to let this one go, and again, it will go the distance. 62 on the punt, 42 on the net. And Vandy will take over with Kyle Shermer at the 20 yard line. So Kyle Shermer in Nashville at Music City on the Grand Ole Opry. Well, he set a record last year 26 touchdown passes in a year. 
Now 44 in his career, so he's knocking on the door of the school record. That belongs to Jake Cutler, who had 59 back a decade or so ago. Cutler's got all the top numbers. It'll be tough for Sherman to get to some of the other numbers, but that touchdown pass number certainly in position. We mentioned Pat Shermer, head coach of the Giants. There's mom Jennifer Shermer, an athlete in her own right, sitting with some of Pat's family, a chance to come to the game here today. Kyle gave a lot of credit to his mom. Said no, dad gets all the credit, but mom had did so much along the way, and an athlete as well. Both so instrumental in his growth. Lineup for uh, run for three or carry blast game. So it's a tough one for Pat Shermer. Saturdays are travel days in the NFL. If you are playing on the road, Pat Shermer's on a plane right now. The Giants head coach heading to Dallas to play the Cowboys on Sunday night football here on NBC. So well, I got to see some of his high school games. A little bit tougher to see some of the NFL games. Pat was in Philadelphia among other NFL teams along the way. And he's listening by satellite radio on the flight on the Giants flight. I talked to Pat before they left early today from New Jersey. So proud of what his son has done over these four years. Here's a shot deep for Lipscomb, uh, rather for Chris Pierce, it's incomplete. With Troy Pride over there in coverage for the Irish. For a quarterback like Shermer, so much is expected because of your dad's pedigree. You are playing against a tough defense, and you play against a lot of them in the SEC, too. Yeah, Troy Pride's a great corner, plays great position there. I'll tell you what, though, Pierce is a big body guy. He can go up and get that ball. He's a good blocker down the field. I like Sherman. I like the throws. The balls are always where he wants to put them, whether it's a back shoulder over the top. He very rarely makes poor decisions with the ball. And right now, it's Notre Dame's defense that's the story. Third and seven, Tranquil Blitzen picked up for the moment, and Shermer hit as he throws. It's incomplete. A lot going on there. Irish brought the heat. Shermer couldn't step into the throw. And it's another three and out for the Vandy offense. Coming from in here, Drew Tranquil, he turns it loose. He comes in force, back steps up and takes it on the chin. The ball's out. This is what I mean about good quarterback play, though. You know, you feel the pressure coming at you, Dalen Hayes getting a little pressure on him and taking him to the ground, but you don't take the sack. He put it in a safe spot, threw it away, incomplete, punt it away. Perhaps roughing the passer missed there because of where the hit came. Parker Tommy getting a lot of TV time, and Chris Fink as well with another fair catch to 35. After a couple of exchanges of punts, the Irish will take over once again at their own 35. Dalen Hayes on the right brought the pressure on Kyle Shermer a moment ago, bringing Terry McCauley. Terry, should this have been called? Yeah, the passer? there's forcible contact to the head and neck area of the quarterback. It's not targeting because he doesn't lower and lead with it. But when you see the head snap back like that, it is forcible and it really should be a foul for roughing the passer. I saw that hit towards the end there. It was not flagged, so it's four straight three and outs for both teams. Vanderbilt has gone three and out their last three possessions. And the Irish will take over the 35. A Justin Yoon field goal, a Brandon Winbush touchdown run in the first quarter. And now Tony Jones Jr. spinning across midfield. Staying on his feet for a run of 20 in the first down of the 45. Dimitri Moore, the tackle. Robert Hainsey stays on his block here at right tackle. He's got a flag down late, very late in the secondary. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 10. 15 yard penalty, first down. Dio Odengbo is called, so that'll make it 35 yards. Play and penalty. What's your right tackle, Hainsey? Stay on his block. Right in here. Good job following it, staying up inside, getting through. You know, Dang oh, yeah, Bo, was a little late. Yep. Adding on the pile. That's why the flag was late. It was thrown by the outside official. So Notre Dame has it all the way to 30, just like that. And Jones gets through the traffic with a run of the first down to the 20 yard line before Ladarius Wiley comes up and knocks him down low. Both big boys on the right side were pulling down the line there. Well, Kramer at right guard is he's kind of a little bit big and slow for, for guard action. He's more built like a tackle. He's 6'5, 360. He played that right tackle spot 
last year kicked inside a position he's more comfortable. Wimbush will keep this here. Young, the receiver, came down to block four, and Brandon is twisted forward to the 16 yard line as the Irish are in the red zone here as we get to halfway through this second quarter. And an injured player for Vandy. So the run game has been carrying. Well, the athletic training staff for Vanderbilt's out. We'll check out for a second. Well, Darius Wiley was the player who was down and injured for Vanderbilt. He got up right as we were going to break, and he's back on the field here. As the Irish will have second and six at the 16 yard line. Tony Jones already 87 yards on eight carries. It's a career high in a game. For the running back to the left of the quarterback, Brandon Wimbush. Wimbush going to look end zone here. A lot of contact. Boykin incomplete. As he was battling with Joan Williams one more time. What they tell us about Joan Williams, if you make a corner, you'd build it like that. 6-3, 210. Vandy's defensive staff really likes what the junior does. He had a pick last week. Coach goes over to him. I want more. <laughs> and he understands that he's that good and he should be getting more. I'll tell you what, those two over there, two big body guys fighting, Boykin, Williams. One of the reasons it was his first career pick, they don't throw at him very often. Claypool in motion, third and six. Here comes full pressure. Wimbush throws it. Claypool dropped it. Incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down again. Wiley, the big hit and safety coming through with the lick. On the back end, and a field goal attempt coming. Jones steps up and picks up the blitzer. Wimbush fading away, feels the free rusher, puts the ball in a spot it can be caught. Wiley closing in a hurry. I, I, I don't mind Wimbush falling away and throwing those. You know, he's drifting away from a free rusher and getting the ball out. Also, if he leads him, he's going to lead him into a big collision with the safety. Here's Yoon for 33-yard field goal. It can move him even higher on the Notre Dame all-time career scoring list. And Justin Yoon, who spent some of his youth in Nashville, Tennessee, and knocks one through. And the Irish lead is now 13. Right, Justin Yoon has been here for a long time and has been a very consistent field goal kicker for the Irish. Two more field goals today, up to 46 on his career. He's got a chance with a record 57. But with that field goal, the one earlier and the extra point, he is now tied with Craig Hendrick. Second behind only Alan Pinkett on the Notre Dame all-time list. And only 27 points away from being number one overall. Good job, Doug. It's good patience by you. <laughs> Let the kickers have their moment, Doug. There should be two different categories. There should be a kicker category and a player category. There is. And there's also one big category. We just showed that one. Okay. <laughs> Jonathan Dora with the touchback. All right, top performance is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. We mentioned these teams have met twice before. Let's take you back. September 16, 95. Bob Davey was in for Lou Holtz, who was recovering from surgery. Audrey Denson had a 38-yard touchdown run. Vandy was held in check. Under 100 yards in the game by that stifling Irish defense. And a uh, very special season. Bob Davey got the bat as the interim coach there for the week for Lou Holtz. And the 41 to nothing win. As you look at the coaches of this year for these two teams the teams met the next year in Nashville to open the season and the Irish won that game 14 7 see if Vandy can get a first down they will end more on the run to the outside by Keyshawn Vaughn so he was in Illinois transferred to Vandy was a stud on the scout team last year big first down carry there 14. And he did a nice job of formation in the Notre Dame defense and creating a situation where the support player ran with motion and there was absolutely nothing left to the outside. Speaking of absolutely nothing, after that first drive, that's what Vanderbilt has had. Three, three and outs until that first down. We'll try to get them into a rhythm with Elijah Lipscomb, the junior wide receiver from New Orleans. Julie Love makes the tackle for Notre Dame. I mentioned it briefly before, Doug. You'll hear from Julian Love coming up 
at halftime. Set. Had a visit with the kid who grew up in the Chicagoland area. Came to this stadium as a little kid, fell in love with Notre Dame football, and now he is starring for the Irish in corner. Shermer in the middle, good pass to Lipscomb on the run, and Love makes a saving tackle at the 33 yard line. First down. Game 20. Standing firm in the pocket, he's coming from left to right on a slant route. I tell you, I really thought he was going to try to run a fade and got the inside release, and I thought the play was dead. He ran an inside route. Beautiful throw. Back to Lipscomb again. It's three in a row for their top receiver, and they are going to their best player on offense when they need it the most. Game of 11 and a first down. He's got a great change of direction. He's dangerous once the ball is in his hands. Shermer is very comfortable throwing timing type routes to him. Tempo here now. Notre Dame was in the nickel with five DBs. They take out Griffith, the safety, bring in Bilal, the rover. And Shermer's got time. He fires. It's incomplete. Love was right there. It was not going left. CJ Bowler, a tall, talented freshman from Mississippi. The day at the office, Shermer just relaxed, has his mouthpiece chewing on it while, while he's while he's playing. Here you go. This is not really put it in the mouth. This is chewing on it a little bit while we're playing. It's the Steph Curry hey, era. You know, Steph has influenced all these kids now, right? Hey, coach. Hey, hey, ref. It's in my mouth. All right. Okay. It just I have to have a mouthpiece. What the heck? Yeah, but we've been sat once and hit a bunch of other times. I left mine in my sock. I never even put it in my mouth. <laughs> Third and one. It will be a run and a first down for Kerry Blassing game. A graduate student, two time captain of this Nashville based offense. First down for the Commodores in 21. Here's Catherine. Well, I asked the fifth year senior Blassing game what he learned from playing with the Commodores all time leading rusher, Ralph Webb, currently with the Patriots. He told me what an asset he was to him. Just coming in the room, seeing how he worked, what he focused on watching film. He set a good standard in the room for how we carry ourselves as running backs, and that's really carried over this year, Mike. Uh, Webb was great for them, Catherine. 4,173 yards on the Pats practice squad. Sherman, sure, look at where you were, Doug. It's covered. He goes the other way, and it's caught. Right to the goal line, but free by Gilman. It's loose. starting to drive back then it was loose in the end zone and the, the Vanderbilt player had a real opportunity to get on this it's blasting game the running back if it's an alignment you think maybe the line's gonna have a tough time you're looking right down the line they'll see did he break the plane there was no whistle for forward progress being stopped no possession gained until it's love with a knee down and coming down in bounds we're going to bring in Terry McCauley our rules analyst to knife through all this Terry let's start there so our down the line shot he didn't break the plane with the, with the ball not a touchdown uh, they didn't rule on the field forward progress replay cannot put that in so we've got a fumble as ruled on the field recovered by Notre Dame or out of bounds doesn't matter either way touchback this is going to stand or be confirmed and, and good point if it's out of bounds it's still the touchback because Vandy was the last to truly possess the ball mm -hmm. Notre Dame had never gained possession First down. So it is confirmed. Oh, Troy Prime Jr. is in there along with Gilman. He was kind of pulling back the arms of the receiver on the slant. Boy, blasting game's got to be sick. He had a he had a touchdown for his team. He had really a little bit of time to, to just fall on it and he couldn't come up with it. And then Troy Pride got after it. And full credit to Aloe Gilman, who's brought some playmaking. Ability and attitude to that Notre Dame safety position. Remember last year, the Notre Dame safeties did not force a turnover. The first time since 1964 they went without a pick. Jalen Elliott had two in the game against Ball State last week. Gilman forces that. And Vandy was walking in for a touchdown. Instead, it's Irish ball with a 13 0 lead. 
Wimbush with a dead play, able to salvage it with a gain of one as we go down to Catherine. Well, Michael, Loey Gilman told me this week that he had to sit out last year, obviously because the NCAA rule after transferring from Navy, and he said it was so tough on him. It was hard to sit back and watch, but he tried to keep his head in the right place. He said he wanted to be an example to the younger guys and contribute to the best of his ability each week to allow this team to win. He said that first game he took against Michigan was one he'll always remember, and he's going to remember this one as well, Mike. No doubt for that uh, key play down by the goal line. Jones Cup set up field to the 25. What Catherine was talking about, Gilman, he played at Navy his first year and played very well, especially against the Irish. Had a terrific game. He hoped for a waiver to play immediately because they changed some of the rules and the military stance on how professional athletic aspirations would conflict with your service. And so that made a transfer more possible. And then he decided to transfer, didn't get the waiver. So he was on the scout team last year. This year he's come in, started immediately, and had a big impact. In the first three games. Wimbush third and five. It is complete. Chris Fink will move the chains under four minutes with an Irish first down. Great job by Fink coming back to the ball. Williams was closing from his corner position in the flat. From the 32, Wimbush looking deep. And he had an interception, but Zaire Jones dropped it. Zaire Jones had it in his hands. Chris Fink got forced to take an inside release, which brought him closer to the safety. So when the ball was thrown, he was led into the safety, and the Jones had an easy pit drop. Man Jones, who dropped that, was suspended for the first two games, charged with the assault after a hit and run. Reinstated and back on the field here this week. And he's up to make the tackle on Wimbush along with Ladarius Wiley. And it's a first down for the Irish at the 42 yard line, leading 13 0. As great an athlete as Wimbush is, he does not look comfortable sliding. Hmm. He, he's such an aggressive runner. He, you know, he's trying to avoid a few hits there. Just go ahead and take off. 42, he's got time here and completes it. It's a gain of eight. They're trying to pull the ball away from Alizé Mack. Injured in the first quarter. Came right back out on the field and holds on to that one. Checking those scores. Catherine and Chris Sims will have the highlights at halftime. We have a roughing the passer call here. Defense number 18. Low hit for the quarterback. Terry. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So it's Colin Anderson. It's a play going low. It's not 18, it's 10. It's Dio Dangbo, who's got that club on his hand. I'm impressed. Wimbush has stepped into some throws with pressure all day. He's, he's starting to hit those shorter mid-range balls that, that have given him some fits. It's two 15-yard penalties. This aggressive Vanderbilt defense cost themselves some ground here in the second quarter. Tony Jones couldn't get away from the tackle on the edge. One yard in the corner. Donovan Sheffield brought it. You know, when we talked to Jason Tarver, the co-defensive coordinator, there's an attitude on this group. They bring it. They are aggressive. They try to keep away from those big penalties. They talk about the strike zone between the knees and the shoulders. No gain on that run. Matter of fact, a loss of a yard. Bring up a third down to Tony Jones. Doug, they do uh, unique things to make sure everybody's flying after the ball. And uh, Ladarius uh, Wiley had a targeting car week one. Last week he adjusted, put the shoulder down, didn't get it on a big hit. And you said, you know, they do some unique things. They keep their film rolling throughout the plays of practice for 20 extra seconds and see the body language of all the guys. Jafar Armstrong comes in, third and ten. It's a designed run for Wimbush, who cannot get out of the tackle by Kenny A. Bear. That's the man who's uh, flashed the first couple of games. So bring up a 46 yard field goal attempt for Justin Yoon if the Irish choose to try that here with a minute 45 to go. Yeah, Jason Tarver talking about running the film. You know, he talks about attacking the ball, all gas, no break, go all the time. So he wants to read the body language of his players between plays as practice as well. And they turn around and they watch that film. If you get caught, <laughs> you will guaranteed make it. Brian Kelly's going to run the clock all the way down here. And take a timeout before the play clock expires. Leave Vanderbilt with as little time as possible.
So 120 to go. The Irish will Time out. have that wow. field goal attempt. Their first of the half. It will be 30 seconds. With a chance to extend the lead. We talked about Vanderbilt. This is an SEC team where they are not intimidated by the setting. They've got the players to match physically as well. And they've had chances to be in this game. What have you seen so far this first half? Definitely chances. They're a little out of sync on offense. Got that nice drive. Came away with nothing because of the strip by Gilman. But I think offensively for Notre Dame, Wimbush running the football in the running game in general has been excellent. They've gashed them at times. There just has to, it, you know, the field goals, not sticking it in the end zone at times, you know, finishing off a drive. That There's still some miss hits. You said Chip Long, the offensive coordinator, told us this week, you mentioned it at the start of the game, you want to get the stink <laughs> off of us, which is a great line, an all-time coordinator. I got that stink off of our offense after that performance against Ball State. Do you think they've brought it with the physicality that they needed to here today? I think so. I think from a physical standpoint, they're flying around. Uh, they just misfired a couple of times and didn't finish off a couple of drives, and this score could be a lot more. For his third field goal attempt, he's got a 25, he's got a 33. Yoon for 46. Good job by Ian Book to get that snap down. He's tight towards his body. Very good operation. Justin Yu, number two all time in scoring in Notre Dame history. He's got 10 of the Irish 16 on this Saturday. Back in 30 seconds. Coming up, we have the State Farm halftime report. Catherine Tappan's going to join Chris Sims. They'll break down the first half, plus highlights of the games from earlier. I need to see Dr. Uslin, my eye doctor. Does that say Syracuse stops Florida State? <laughs> they are dynasty. Syracuse is a football powerhouse again. We mentioned a couple of times our visit with Julian Love to the corner from the Chicago land area. Uh, one of the uh, very talented players on this team who's also a really interesting young man. We'll hear how his Notre Dame dream got started and uh, plays out every week. Both coming up to State Farm Halftime Report with Catherine and Chris. That's two straight all the way out of the back of the end zone kickoffs from Jonathan Doerr. That's exactly what Notre Dame sees in practice every week. What they see in games every week is Drew Tranquil making plays. He plays downhill, reads things quickly, is sure of what he's seeing and reacts and goes. There's no hesitation. He, he just is all out. And once he makes a decision of what he sees, he gets after it, closes, the, closes that gap between he and the, gun, the ball carrier and doesn't allow him to get away. Doesn't allow the ball carrier to get in a position to make a move or juke because there's just not enough of a window. It's, he's sure of what he's seeing. Playing his third different position from Fort Wayne, Indiana. He and Tavon Coney taking the inside load for the Irish here. Blasting games carry was a tackle by Coney. As we approach a minute left, Vanderbilt gets the ball to start the second half. Try to add something before the break here. Second and three for Kyle Shermer. Looking deep, looking middle, and it's complete. Into Notre Dame territory for their big tight end, Jared Pinkney. Coming off a 98 yard performance last week, down to the 42 yard line. He's a force at tight end. He can be a dominant player. If they can, if Notre Dame has dominated this first half, but if Vanderbilt can put a score in the end zone, it's a ballgame. Sure has that pass rejected and incomplete. That push from the Irish, it was a tranquil side by side with Coney. The guys just never stop. It just looked like there was a big push up the middle and everything was just in the backfield. Gaps, unblocked people. Dalen Hayes, Drew Tranquil, Tavon Coney all coming free. Jim. And it doesn't wind up being a sack, though. The ball's out on time. It got batted, knocked down. It keeps you in down and distance offensively. Second and 10 coming up. Vanderbilt's gone to this little quicker, no huddle pace. And that has helped them move the ball down the field on the Irish. Shermer's going to get out of the pocket and throw this time. That's a nice throw on the run. It's caught at the 29 yard line by Cam Johnson. First down. Clock stops. Chains move from 29 till halftime. See how Shermer moves? He keeps two hands. He's so fundamentally sound. Two hands on the ball, sliding and moving. He's got Josh Crawford next to him at the running back spot. Fourth different running back we've seen today. Crawford helps pick up the pressure as Shermer fires high and incomplete. Trying to get it over to C.J. Bowler, that freshman. Nice job against that Notre Dame pressure by the running back, Josh Crawford. 
Got a couple big hands in his face there and sails the ball high. And in two-minute situation, incomplete passes are not that bad. I and mean, it's still just 13 seconds. Got a couple plays to get close. You know, a couple of timeouts in 13 seconds. Field goal from here is 46 yards. So you really have to avoid a sack for the mouthpiece chewing senior quarterback. Seeing five on the line, the Irish bring three, drop eight. Shermer rips it in the middle, terrific catch down to the three and a timeout taken. Jared Pinckney up high to make the play with eight seconds remaining. And Sherman's trying to get the guy's attention to take timeout. The officials running down to their spots. Timeout. Vanderbilt. Eight seconds second of the half. at the three. Seconds. Chance to run a play. Now seven seconds. Vanderbilt University connects technology and humanity. Innovation and imagination. Determination and distinction. Vanderbilt University. They put the second back on the clock. There's eight seconds left. Vandy ball at the three. The play call for him. What are you thinking Vandy can do in this spot? They have to throw the ball, throw it quickly. So they got Lipskin on the back shoulder fade that they love. Notre Dame will probably have a guy rolled his way to try to take that opportunity away. If they do that, that leaves Pinkney one-on-one -on -one somewhere on the field. And he is a big body guy that just showed he can go up and get the ball. So Doug's looking at 16 and 80. 16 Lipskin, the receiver, comes to the bottom of your screen. 80 to 10 and Pinkney lines up in the slot. He'll be up on the right hand. First and goal, eight seconds, one timeout. And Kyle Shermer popping in the end zone here. He's looking, got to get rid of it. He throws, it's incomplete. It was a touchdown and a touchdown run for Donovan Tennyson if he could have hung on. The junior did not. And here comes the field goal attempt. Yeah, they put a bracket on the bottom of the lids come, so the one-on-one -on -one matchup becomes the back out of the backfield or the underneath route. Oh. Right through. Right through. Little I, fastball. This is two drives. Vanderbilt had chances to score touchdowns. And this is the, to yep. turn your hands over there to catch it. Don't catch it like a basket. Yep. Right, Riley Gay, whose dad played hockey at Notre Dame with a 21 yard field goal before halftime. But first, the Irish will take a timeout. Timeout. Notre Dame. Their second of the half it will be 30 seconds. Doug, you made a really good point for young football players about being a hands catcher and being a confident hands catcher could be the difference in a touchdown on this play. Absolutely. He, he has both hands, kind of a basket type catch, but he can turn those things over, catch it backhanded with the thumbs together and your hands up. As opposed to pinkies together here. Correct. Trying to make the catch. You want the thumbs together, hands catching? Yes. If the ball's below your waist, pinkies are together. If it's above your waist, turn those hands over and catch it thumbs together. Kyle Sherman knows that could have put him in a better spot. What a big spot that would have been. You know, this is Vanderbilt's story. It will perhaps develop in time permitting in the second half. Lowest enrollment in the SEC. They're playing against these mega powers in college football with so many great student athletes, intelligent young men. Sometimes it's an uphill fight, and you can't afford the margin of error that other SEC schools can. And that's one of the examples coming on the road here. You've got to make those plays. Bradley Gay from 21. Pops it through, and we hit halftime, and Vandy gets a field goal, and we'll get the ball to start the second half. Irish score the first 16. Vandy gets that field goal. Stay tuned for the State Farm halftime report with Catherine Tappan and Chris Sims right after these messages. And a word from your local station. 16 3 Irish in the break. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Presented by Visa. They are capable of coming back and winning the game. Don't let them touch our stadium. They don't take our tradition. They don't take what's ours. We take it from them. So second half, do the things that we talked about. One play at a time. Refocus on the next play. Hit them in the mouth. I want our identity to be known to everybody in the country when we are down. When we're done here, we're blue collar. We will hit you in the mouth 
for four quarters, not two. Not two. Four. Strong halftime message from Irish head coach Brian Kelly to his team. They'll be on defense to start this third quarter. 16-3 they lead. As we get set for the third, Mike Tirico, Doug Flutie, Catherine Tappan, Terry McCauley, Chris Sims with you here in South Bend. Vanderbilt moved the ball those last couple of drives. Offensively, Notre Dame had a few of those drives that Brian Kelly was talking about. They kind of hit him in the mouth. Aggressive physical play up front that they got away from last week against Ball State. And I think his point there is the first two weeks they played well in the first half and done very little in the second half and held on. He wants his team to play a full game for four quarters. Vanderbilt did find something with the pass game. Pinkney, a tight end, is a big play guy. They got to try to target him as much as possible in the middle of the field. Third straight touchback for Jonathan Doerr. Much better for him in the kickoffs. Our first half stats are brought to you by Visa. You see the run domination with Notre Dame, 163 yards. Headlined by Tony Jones Jr. with 11 carries from 91. But Vandy got the offense going those last two drives. They had 146 yards. One ended up with the fumble on the one-yard line. And they were the drop pass on that next drive away from another touchdown. Which could be a 16-14 game right now instead of 16-3. So Kyle Shermer, as we told you earlier, the four-year starter, His dad, the head coach of the New York Giants, back to work in a good rhythm at the end of the first half, trying to pick up where he left off. Elijah Lipscomb juggled it, but held on at the 42-yard line. It's first down, and pick up a 17. He did a great job at uh, pushing Troy Tr with his speed. Getting Troy Pride to back off, and he still comes out with it off the bottom. Okay. Just explosiveness. Looked like he was going to take that deep. I thought they were just air one out. He put the brakes on and ran a curl route. You have to threaten that defensive back and make him get out of his back. And that completion to 17. Shermer 13 of 21. 170 yards. Has not thrown a pick thus far. Throw on the move, and he almost threw a pick there. And Julian Love is covering Lipscomb. The pass incomplete. And we have a flag down. Like Pierce was fighting to get away from Julian Love. Holding defense number five. There was a four pass, so a 10 yard penalty is automatic first down. Troy Pride is called on that play. So this is Love on Lipscomb. I think it happened up the field on Pierce. That Pride uh, grabbed him on the outbreaking route. Yep, you're right. Was good coverage by Love, but Pride was guilty of that hole. So, the junior from Greer, South Carolina. The holding penalty, and it puts Vandy right back on the move where they left off these last two drives in Irish territory. Quickly out. This can get a block. Yeah, look at him on the edge there. Chased down by Jalen Elliott, but Kalijah Lipscomb is now stepping up his play. His seventh catch of what, this game. What quickness. I mean, he had two defenders coming at him, put the brakes on. He had one blocker, two defenders. Made them both miss and splits it for a decent little game. Just exceptional quickness. Here's two defenders in a phone booth. And he still almost made more out of it. Osmar Bilal, the rover, was out there instead of a nickel. And Lipscomb got right by him. Turned it up field for that run to the 34 yard line is Keyshawn Vaughn. So, Vaughn, I mentioned he's a transfer from Illinois. And Commodore fans, you know this, but for the folks watching around the country, he went to Pro Cone High School. It's only a couple of miles from Vandy Stadium there in Nashville. So, uh, he comes back home after playing at Illinois, you see, for the first couple of seasons. Just was uh, wowing everybody. He was on scout team last year in that uh, mandatory sit out season after the transfer. Now he, blasting game, Wakefield and Crawford give Vandy four good options at running back. It's time to run with blasting game. The graduate student from Alabama gains a couple of yards. I don't think we've talked about it much, but Vandy likes to go the multiple tight end sets, much like a Stanford formation. You a little bit powerful. They would love to be a power football team and run play action with Shermer at quarterback and then hit the balls down the field. Uh, they haven't established enough of a running game to make all that happen, so the success has come more out of the short passing. 
two tight ends 38 percent of the snaps last year but playing to that strength most of this year in the first two games it was two out of every three snaps eighth in the country was out of two tight ends inside run one more time this time it's Jamari Wakefield and he'll gain about three yards Addy Okundiji made the tackle here comes a third down from the 29 yard line of this opening second half drive. You have to run the ball enough to keep a defense honest. But the way Vandy looked just before the half throwing the ball in a two minute situation. I kind of like turning Shermer loose and let him throw the ball a little bit. Doug when they were in no huddle and going up and down the field I thought that was the best we've seen them so far. I couldn't agree with you more. I like picking a tight end here. Watch Julian Aquara at the left end for Notre Dame defensively. Third and five. Shermer out of his hands quick. On time. On target at a first down to Trey Ellis, the graduate student from Charlotte. Well, moving at the 23 yard line. Ellis, he's to the right, just running the slant route. They kept the tight end in. Max protect to block things up and hit a slant route. Ellis is doing a little kick return type of guy. So he's shifty once the ball's in his hand. So this is a nice little catch for him. For him to be in the slot and run a nice little slant route. They lost a bunch of their receivers, 120 receptions and 12 touchdowns. And Duncan and Sherfield and Scott, those are surnames that uh, Commodore fans got familiar with last year. A little play pass on first down. And he's covered deep, so Shermer just uses his outlet. Blasting game. Couldn't hang on. Is this a pro type quarterback we're looking at, Kyle Shermer, Doug? No doubt about it. He's that style of guy. And the mental aspect of the game, those are the guys that can make a name for himself at the next level as a backup. You don't have to be the most, you know, it's not about your athleticism and your arm strength. If you're making good decisions and running this offense, he can line anybody up, tell them what they're doing, tell everyone they're assigned. He just did it with Devin Cochran, his right tackle. Came back with a question. The 23, Vaughn is spinning, and he spun his way into a big loss. Osmar Bilal, the rover, made the first hit, and Jalen Elliott brought the rest of those golden helmets to the tackle. Coach, this is one of those know when your journey's over. There was a north-south cut. We might have gotten a yard or two, but he wanted to bounce this and get to the outside. I mean, if he just stays north-south inside here, he might get a yard or two. Instead, he breaks the tackle, tranquil, penetrated, the whole defense is chasing, and he lose five more yards. This Notre Dame defense is really stiffened as teams have gotten inside the 30 yard line on them as this season has gone on. Many players, not a singular star. They have raised pretty solid. They need to get to the 13. Shermer has Lipscomb, but Lipscomb is going to be tackled by Houston Griffith. Here's the freshman. Started his prep school days in Chicago, then went to IMG Academy in Florida. He's an impact freshman on this Irish defense. It's not a bad game. You had a long yardage situation. You're probably not going to make that. So you're trying to pick up five to ten yards and get yourself in field goal range. So Griffith forces fourth down and brings on Riley Gay for the 43 yard field goal attempt. Parker Tomey, the punter, is the holder. The kick's no good. Tough one for Riley Gay. To walk on and a lot of family who have Notre Dame ties. A bunch of folks here, but he missed that field goal. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. By U.S. Bank, the power of possible. By Jersey Mike's subs, be a sub above. And by State Farm, talk to an agent today at 1 800 State Farm. There's a famous Vanderbilt Notre Dame tie. Vanderbilt alum, Brentland Rice, the legendary sports writer who famously penned in 1924 that Herald Tribune article that uh, was the beginning of the phrase, the four horsemen. And that turned to eventually become an iconic part of Notre Dame's football history. Three years, two losses for that group. Both of those losses coming in Lincoln against Nebraska. We do not have a blue-gray October sky here. We have a blue, sunny, hot sky on this September day. Great job by Wimbus to corral that one. Just fire it. Incomplete. We'll bring up second down. Minimize your, your negative play there. Bobble the snap. The mesh isn't good, so you're not getting a true read on the zone read here. So it's better safe than sorry. Just keep the ball. And now he does a good job of throwing away. I would have probably sailed it out of bounds in the row E. 
He throws it at his feet. Anyway. Was it intentional at his feet? What do you think, Coach? It's all good. It's, it's all, all good. It's within the rules, right? Second and ten. A design run and Wimbush into the middle of the field and a first down at the 36-yard line. There's with Darius Wiley on the tackle again. They need to get him involved running the ball. I mean, he had a good first half running the ball. Keep it going. This is a very important drive for Notre Dame. They've, they've been sluggish in the second halves of games. Vanderbilt came right down and got it. Or actually, they missed the field goal, but drove the ball. You have to respond. Tony Jones looking for a 100-yard day. He's going to be very close to it with that run of nine. Should get him right to a 100 on the nose. Donovan Sheffield brought him down. He's having a nice day carrying the ball as well. The, the, the run game's been excellent. They have not thrown the ball extremely well today. He's the natural running back of the guys who are in that group for the moment. And, uh, really has a chance to take that number one job. Wimbush kept it, thought about a throw, and it'll be twisted to the 50 yard line and end up being a four yard carry on that one. To be three more tackles for Vandy. So, Doug, if you've got starting quarterback, you've got a good team, sometimes you're hesitant to have him run. You're like, go ahead, run the quarterback. Wimbush here taking his helmet off and coming off to the sideline. That's the fear when your quarterback runs so often. But it's what he does. It's his game. It's what gets him into a groove when he's playing. And they have no bones about getting Ian Book in the game, and, and they're very confident in Ian. The helmet got uh, bumped and batted around, as you see, with the hit there by Tay Daly, the safety. So Ian Book, who's been in a few times already, is back in, has one completion. Book is flushed and chased, and it'll just get out of bounds with a loss of a couple. Of yards, you know, we, we've seen book come in so quickly. He's actually probably gonna come back out again So we'll hold the phone on, on uh, the Ian book, book. It, It's amazing though. He goes in and does a little play action rollout thing moving on I mean when you put a guy in for one play hand the ball off and he usually comes off That's not the situation with Ian book. They trust him if it's a third down fourth down play throwing the football whatever they got to do He is all-time one snap away. I mean he's like <laughs> Off with the visor, off with the headset, on with the helmet. Buckle it up, let's go. Second and 13, Wimbo shot. Boykin. Could not get it. That's a really, really good corner in Joan Williams. He was a four star signee. Uh, best line I heard about him he's as big as the stadium we're going to. That's what the <laughs> Vandy defensive coordinator Perfect said position, about position, finding the ball, reaching back with his left hand to get a piece of it. He's a great matchup with Boykin because they're two long body type guys and they're physical. He's got Chase Claypool now if it ends up being man coverage. It's third and 13. Irish need to get to the 40. Three receivers to the top, one to the bottom. Nowhere to go. That play was red and blown up immediately by Alan George, the redshirt freshman nickel, who was all over Chris Fink. Slow to get up after a tackle for a loss of six. That's just trusting your eyes, seeing what, what's going on in front of you, and just going right now, no hesitation. I, I wonder why more of these wide receiver screens aren't picked off and taken the other way. You know, you're asking receivers in space to, to make a block on a guy that's coming downhill. Tyler Newsom has two long punts, but both were touchbacks. 62 and 63 yards. This one's 53 and going to be returned. And Trey Ellis is brought down by Aloe Gilman at the 13 yard line. So that time, Newsom doesn't kick it out of the back of the end zone. It's very good special teams. Coverage goes and gets it. It's a long field for Vandy with seven left in the third. So here we go. Comes down to this. PG Tour's ultimate prize race for the FedEx Cup and ended the Tour Championship at East Lake in Atlanta. Golf Channel starts it on Thursday, right here on NBC this time next weekend. Tigers in 20th of the top 30 to make it. Grant Snedeker, who has won the Tour Championship, the FedEx Championship in 2012. Proud Vandy alum. He's on hand today. Sneds finished 40th this year in the Tour Championship race, just outside, but he shot 59 in a round. And won the tournament in Greensboro earlier this year. Really proud Nashville guy and Vandy alum. Great to see Snitz representing the Commodores here and watching Jamar and Wakefield with that first down carry. Four five, make it six. Their last few drives, Baron Hill has been able to move the football. Notre Dame not adding to their lead. They move the ball a little bit, but Vandy seems to be getting a little traction. 
I, I couldn't agree with you more, Doug. The last three drives, seven, eight, and ten plays for Vanderbilt. Kyle Shermer's numbers, pretty decent, 16 of 25. Vandy's not been able to run the ball. They figured that out. Now they're doing it in the air. There's Shermer, complete again. The crosser is Chris Pierce. Pulled down by Troy Pride at the 38, but a gain of 20 and another Commodore first down. It's a hard play action. Here's the route coming across. It's just a speed route. He threatened his defender, Troy Pride, vertically, which froze him for a second, creates a little separation, come across the field. And Shermer, in the middle of the field, he's a big, tall quarterback, sees the middle of the field well, delivers a strike. Six foot four. Standing tall in that collapsing pocket and completes a blasting game as running back. So we'll check down over the ball for about two yards to the 41 yard line. Nice job in the pocket, just moving from left to right. You know, he's looking at the left side of the field, calmly comes back over the ball, finds his receiver, really goes through his progressions. Take that snap and on the slant, Julian Love comes around to make the play. And batted away in his continuing battle with Kalija Lipscomb, which is a good one. Looked like Julian had a little left arm wrap here on the slant route underneath. A little turn of the body. Not quite. Nice play on the ball, though. Beautiful play on the ball. Julian, we talk to we talk to the Notre Dame receivers all the time. And they love when they go up against him because they, if we know they can beat them. They're going against the best. And that, that game day will be easy. So a couple more pass breakups added to that. He's second on the all-time Notre Dame list. Guy Clarence Ellis, great name from the late 60s. Third and eight. Under pressure. Shermer is complete. What a job by Lipscomb to hang on, battling with Troy Pride. It's a first down for Vandy right around midfield. You can't play this any better. Two flags back by Shermer as the pressure is coming in around. Personal foul. Roughing the pass. Defense number 42. 15-yard penalty. First down. Julian Okwara. Watch the left arm of Julian Okwara with the wrap around the head, the slap to the helmet. And on the completion, I mean, the coverage can't be any better. The timing can't be any better. It's a beautiful throw and catch. And Troy Pride's got to be saying, what the heck do I have to do to break that one up? Nice button job by Lipscomb. Just in that big hand with the glove to hold it with one oh, hand. Yeah. Like an ice cream cone, bring it down. You had one of those gloves on the other day. You could hold on the ball with one finger. It's kind of scary, it is. The guys are supremely talented, but you understand how they can make those one-end catches. Here is Shermer, looking deep. End zone shot, double coverage down there, and it is going to be intercepted. He brought it back out, so it's going to be down at the one, but Troy Craig Jr. comes up with his second career interception. Well, they tried the shot play. Notre Dame's defense, which has been so good, playing vertical routes, playing deep balls, not fooled. Corner and a safety were there. The ball underthrown, and it's a pick for Pride. Only mistake was they brought it out and didn't get the touchback. The Irish will have it at their own one. Still up 13. Is the site the NASCAR playoff opener? 16 drivers trying to go for the season-long title. You'll see at NBCSN, 3 Eastern time, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex Jr. So good all year. The man Brad Keselowski's on a roll. He's won the last two races, including Monday at Indianapolis Motor Speed. NASCAR playoffs start tomorrow. Longest pass in Notre Dame history is 96 yards. Longest run in Notre Dame history is 98 yards. They have 99 to go here, and they'll gain one, maybe two as Wimbush keeps it to get some space. This is an area of the field where Brian Kelly usually likes to try one play action pass and go deep. But with Williams out there on corner and that individual route, <laughs> you don't you don't go for it. Here comes Ian Book back up at his own end. He's your official three own three yard line quarterback, right? <laughs> and they, they do shuttle them with the comfort of shuttling backs or receivers. So back up Book. We'll hand off here and they'll move it out close to the nine yard line with Jafar Armstrong. Game of six, Cameron Tidd, the Richard Sophomore nose tackle in there. That's a nice push to get out from the shadow of your own goal line to get you in a third and manageable. Two tight end set. 
So Notre Dame front, see if they can get a push. They were physical, more physical in the first half. Brock Wright is the fullback. Good push there, and Armstrong only gets to the 10. He'll be held a yard short, so the Irish run it three times, only gain nine yards, and uh, they will be forced to kick it away. It's a three and out for the fourth time in this game from the Vandy defense. And that was a very conservative series of downs, protecting the football, not wanting to make a big mistake. I don't know. You know, in that situation, I like Brandon Wimbush in the game and using his legs. Concur. See what Newsom can do with a whole lot of field to kick it. Can he hit a long one this time? He does. Rocket shot, 57 yards. From the 33, here comes Ellis. Up the middle, Trey Ellis. Oh, he had a chance. He was on the run, but Chase Claypool, the starting receiver, who's on every special team because he's fast, he's athletic, and he can make plays. He got down there and made the stop after a return of 20. Vandy's got it in great field position. Chase Claypool, their name starting wide receiver, may have prevented a touchdown in that punt up. Yeah, we were talking to Miles Boykin this week about what a great athlete Claypool was. He said he's just a freak athlete. That's why he's on all these special teams. That's a great open field tackle. Terry McCauley, a lot of space, but you get a block in the back right at the point of attack, which is really the ones you you, you have to get on the field, and and then we just missed that one. Here after Rahman hits the snapper, John Shannon. First down in Notre Dame territory. Kyle Sherman's got a wide open receiver and a good move in the open field. Down for C.J. Bowler, who had a chance earlier, makes a big play here to take it to the 17, gain of 30. Both Pinckney and Bowler are starting up the field. Pinckney's clearing it out. It looked like Bowler was going to take it inside. Great move. Double move to the outside. Easy throw and catch. And then something after the catch. Momentum has clearly swung here since late second quarter. When the Irish were up 16-0. Vanderbilt has had a field goal, the pick in the end zone. The field goal drive should have been a touchdown drive. An open receiver dropped the ball. So Vandy has a real good chance to get this one much closer. Twisty run for three. It's been a busy day as Keyshawn Vaughn carried. Audio can need to be called three times. The defensive end for the Irish. And slow to get up is the left tackle Justin School for Vanderbilt. One of those play action passes, those big plays down the field where he holds the ball for a while. They're going hard play action. And Schirmer has time to settle his feet, allow those double move routes, and, and his receivers to work down the field. Touchdown makes it a one score game. Schirmer hands big running lane. Inside the five into the three goes Vaughn. Tavon Coney saved a touchdown first and goal. Vanderbilt. Left side of the offensive line. You got Clements in school. 56 is young, by the way. He's turning it in and sealing the inside. School turns his man to the outside. Just that's a numbers game. They just they had they had leverage on their blocks to begin with, and they just created a crease that was easy to go north and south. Well, both backs are in there. Keyshawn Vaughn and Gary Blassing game. A couple of tight ends as well. First and goal. Give to the first back through blasting game, trying to blast in there. Tranquil and Hayes and Law. All there for the Irish. The nine seconds in this third quarter. I don't know. You have the big tight end like Pinky 80 down here. Vanderbilt has struggled. They, they turned the ball over a couple times last week against Nevada down in the red zone with receivers that pumped the ball. They really struggled to finish off drives and stick it in the end zone. Three tight ends now. They're all going to load up on the right side. Cam Johnson's the lone receiver. Vaughn's the back. And here comes Vaughn up the middle and touch touchdown. Vanderbilt, Keyshawn Vaughn. So what leads to field position the decision to bring that interception out be at the one yard line Notre Dame goes three and out Vandy gets good field position on the punt return and scores here Cam Johnson goes in motion draws a lot of attention 
It's all misdirection and deceiving, and it's north and south. And untouched by a Notre Dame defender, Riley Gay missed the field goal earlier, just sneaks that extra point in. And it is a six point game with 11 seconds left here in the third quarter. So Derek Mason's team is taken over after getting outplayed in the first. And they are very much alive. Totally outplayed in the first. But by the end of the first half, yes. two opportunities for touchdowns went by the board. And Vandy still is only down by six. Yeah, and I should say first quarter, not first okay. half. But I mean, you're absolutely right, Doug. They took control of the game. And again, this is a team that undaunted by the stage, undaunted by being down. We talked to Derek Mason at length about this. Just go back to SEC media days back in Alabama this summer and the fifth year head coach of Bandy said when asked about coming to South Bend we go places we play people all the time in the SEC so although there's history and legacy here we're not intimidated by a trip like this it's really and USC talks about it, it's not an intimidating environment here so much as a nostalgic fun environment to play football in and, and playing down in the SEC they've been in some hostile atmospheres so this is nothing from right. that standpoint. That's right, absolutely. Riley Gay kicks it Michael Young and Jafar Armstrong, and Young will take an eight. I should get it to 25. Doug, take me back to that last drive led by Kyle Sherman. I'll tell you what, the play action pass and the upfield routes, he throws the ball so well. He's patient in the pocket, settles his feet, easy throw because of a great route. Those types of plays, Sherman, and, and the key to it is pass protection in those plays. The run game here, they had him outnumbered. They had Notre Dame outnumbered, sealed a couple of blocks, and then misdirection to get into the end zone. They struggled down by the goal line, had to fool them a little bit, and did so. They're the yards by half, just 25 in this quarter, just 111 since the first quarter for the Irish. So their offense has to get going. And Wimbush on the design run will be stopped, no gain. And Vanderbilt will take the momentum to the fourth quarter. Alston Orgy in on the tackle. After three, Notre Dame 16, Vandy 10. We're back after these messages from your local station. Got a good one if you're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Visa. Score by quarters brought to you by Visa. Notre Dame was up 16 to nothing. Vanderbilt has scored the last 10 points as we begin the fourth quarter on this 82 degree day in South Bend. Derek Mason's team has the momentum. Brian Kelly's offense stagnant here in the third with just 25 yards. Fourth quarter begins with second down and 10 for Brandon Wimbush. And he throws complete over the middle. First catch for Miles Boykin to roll him out to the 39 yard line. First down to gain of 14. Looks like Notre Dame's going to get in a more aggressive mode here. They had Jafar Armstrong running a real route there and had a real shot at a big play. You said that in the break. That's what they should do to kick the offense going. Here is the running back Armstrong. We'll get out to the 49 yard line. Very close to a first down. I think you've got to pick up the tempo. Let put the ball in Wimbush's hands as far as zone read stuff or throwing the football, even if he has to scramble and move, get him flowing. This will be second and one, and now the first down is gained into Vanderbilt territory at the 44. With Jafar Armstrong, the Irish have run it for 211 yards today, and they need all of it because they've only thrown for 92. They may come back to that wheel route to Armstrong at some point. 44, the tempo, and no gain this time for Armstrong. As he is stacked up inside. Charles Wright, who is the playmaker on this Vanderbilt front seven, has been quiet so far, but he has heard from there. Well, he's gotten a lot of attention so far this year with teams sliding his way, double teaming him, chipping him with backs, but he, he was an undersized guy for the position that plays with a chip on the shoulder. Two edge rushers come off, so the best pass rush they can get is for 42. Watch the back release weak side. Back right now is Tony Jones Jr. Wimbush looking that way, throwing that way, and there is Jones down the sideline to the 12 yard line. Heisman Trophy winner, that's one. Saw it, got it. Good call, Doug. First down for Notre Dame. This is the same way they had on the first play of the drive, but Wimbush threw the slant low snap, picks it up again. Try it to the other side to make it a new look on a new defender. The Irish have it at the 12. Chris Fink, did he catch it? No. With the 
ground first to try to scoop it up and those are the throws that Wimbush sometimes struggles with that are should be easy completions. They should be but the reason you struggle sometimes on those is you panic that the defender I don't, it would drive me crazy because you can't look at the defenders breaking on the ball and this thing can get picked and go 80 yards the other way. So you're trying to get it to him as quickly as possible. There's a defender within three to four yards. So you want to miss safe and get it away from that defender. He will catch and run her down the loss of two yards there. Really? Huh. All right. So second and 12. Wimbush in the pocket. Slings it across. It's caught by Alizé Mack, the tight end, to the five-yard line. So it'll be third down and two for the touchdown. Two for the first down. Five for the touchdown. And here comes Ian Book. Here come a couple of tight ends. I, you know, I like Ian Book in the short passing game and some of the things he does. He's very efficient with the ball, smart and all that. But in this area of the field, I love Brandon Winbush with his legs. You know, the quarterback runs down here. I, I got to anticipate a play action pass. 32. Ian Book, and there it is, Doug. It's play action. It's the tight end Wisher who's going to be very close to the first down. The mark is going to depend on the first down. It looks like he got it. Let's see where they're going to put it. I was going to say fourth down. It put it down just shy of the three yard line there. So it's fourth and a half a foot. Joan Williams made the hit. For a corner, Williams is physical. I mean, that's a tight end. That is a tight end. He's coming and stonewalling just short of the first down. Well, you're over there too. You see him wipe the arm out, but it's where you are once you go over the sideline. Brian Kelly's running down to call timeout. I think going to try to call a timeout, perhaps get them to look at it or challenge the spot. That's why he wants to know why they're not looking at it or why the play clock, which was running down, was not pumped back up. Terry McCauley, let's talk about that play and spotting it on that sideline. Yeah, the out of bounds spot is going to be where the ball crosses the sideline as he goes out of bounds. And it's really close to the line of gain. I don't think we have an obvious shot that, that he did or didn't make it so far. And Terry, you hit it. It's where the ball is when he crosses the sideline. So even though you see that stretch there, right. you got to know where he went over the sideline. Exactly. He may have already crossed the sideline when he stretches it beyond. And you can stitch, you can put different replay angles together, but you he, see, he looks out of bounds to me when he does the he swipe. Sure, to stretch he sure out. does. I don't I don't see this being reversed. And Brian Kelly took a timeout. I don't know if the timeout was granted and charged to Notre Dame before the booth called down for the replay. Which would stop it without the timeout being used. So if this play stands, it's fourth and a half yard. And if it does stay at fourth and a half yard, I don't think there's any doubt that Notre Dame will go for it. A field goal would put them up by nine and be very yeah, big. To just going to ask you. To be a two point I, or two mm -hmm. score, but I, they haven't stuck the ball in the end zone but once today. They're down this close. I think they want to stick it in the end zone. And they'll, they'll go for it on fourth down. Even though a field goal would put you up by two scores. Mm -hmm. You know, welcome those of you who are watching the uh, Auburn LSU game that just hit halftime. SEC fans are coming over to see how Vanderbilt's going to do on this trip up to South Bend. They were down 16 0, but if control play in the third quarter, yardage was virtually even until this Notre Dame drive. The best the Irish offense has looked in this second half on this drive, and they could be facing fourth and a half yard as we look at this review. Eric Mason's team was 3 0 last year, played Alabama, and got cleaned out. This Saturday afternoon SEC time window 59 to nothing and their season went south the rest of the year. They were five and seven only won one game in the league. Lengthy review going on here. To see if Nick Wisher the tight end. Before he crossed the sideline had swiped the ball past the two yard line which is where the first down was the line to game. And you would think with nothing conclusive. I, I believe in Terry. I believe in Terry. Field fans. It would be fourth down. 
Nothing conclusive there, Terry. Yeah, I mean, in, on that play, I, I look at these, either it's an obvious error on the field, they obviously got it right, or you can't tell. And I think on this one, you just you just can't tell. And it really probably shouldn't have taken as long as it did. All right, let's spin forward here, Doug. There was not a Notre Dame try timeout charge. It's fourth and a half yards for the Irish, and Brandon Wimbush is back in. This is going to be a quarterback sneak, plow ahead, and try to pick up this first down. I, I just, you've got to get this ball in the end zone if you're Notre Dame. Rock right, the tight end, going to help push Wimbush across the line if he can get there. And we'll just see in the mosh pit of humanity, shoulder pads at all, where the nose of the ball. That's a decision. It is right at the. If you place it at the front of that uh, yard line, which was the yard to gain, it would be a first down. You got to touch the front of the two there because the drive started at the 12. They come out and measure. If our little line is correct, he's got it. It looked like they had to get to the front of that two yard line, so I think he got it. So in the uh, stadium where the Reggie Bush play was the Bush push. <laughs> well, now it's the, legal. Well, that's the Wimbush push. The Wimbush push. <laughs> and he's got it. First down. But I, I believe you had to go for that because you need to come away with seven. I know in the NFL, every coach in the NFL will line up, kick that field goal, and take the two score lead. Yep. So Ian Book will come back in for the Irish, and Wimbush will return to the bench. Again, Brock Wright, the tight end, is the fullback. The Irish have three tight ends out there. Cole Komet, they're very good tight ends, out with a high ankle sprain for a little bit. Couple of weeks at least. So Alizé Mack, Nick Wisher, and Brock Wright, the three tight ends. So I am assuming the reason Book's in the game in here is that those bootleg actions, those short little flows, are flat. He's more accurate off the play actions, and and if he's just running the ball, he can hand it off. Back in motion, first and goal, Notre Dame from the two. To the back of the end zone, Wisher, touchdown. And the line, Nick Wisher 82, just slips the defenders and right out, just cannot get held up at the line of scrimmage. That's the only, only thing that could stop that play. Vanderbilt was selling out to stop the run. It's interesting, Doug, because the play clock starts right after a touchdown this year in college football to expedite the clock. Notre Dame was going to go for one, then they decided to go for two to try to go up 14. That play clock's running down, and now <laughs> they decide to repump the play clock, which is going to give Notre Dame a chance to get set up. And calmly go for the two as opposed to a fire drill two point conversion. And Vandy's trying to get adjusted on their end. Notre Dame's missing a player. Terry, why would they reset the play clock there? Well, they really, unless, unless there was a delay in getting the ball spotted, then the clock should just run and it's really up to the offense to decide what they're going to do in that 40 seconds. And now Ian Book's going to come back in for Brandon Wimbush. This kind of defeats the whole purpose of, of, of starting the clock at 7 o'clock at 40 seconds if we're going to be here for this long. And, and that was a rule that was put into college football this year. Score, touchdown, going to give you a couple of deep breaths to celebrate and then start a 40-second play clock. Dead on, Mike. Absolutely. And uh, Brian Kelly's going to take a timeout, timeout here. It's Notre Dame. They're first of the half. And Notre Dame gets settled. It will be 30 seconds. You know, you see players running around left and right to try to get set up in that situation. And then on top of all that, you do get the option which hash you want to pick, left hash or right hash for a two-point conversion. And, and Terry, that you, when you were an NFL referee, were the best when we worked games because you'd move the game along quickly. And the length of college football means they've had to address some clock issues to try to keep games going. They, they have. I mean, in the in the last past few years, it got to the point where we were just going to play again when everybody was ready to play. So they put in these 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 40 second clock, the one minute in between uh, touch after scores uh, on kickoffs to to keep the game moving to to minimize dead time mm -hmm. where they're not playing football because that's what we're here to see. So you can play football. And there in that situation, Vanderbilt had every right to complain about that situation because they were the ones going with you. Now you're going to go for two. You want us to run a defense out there? And I'm not sure you go for two here. Two does get it to 14, but there's 11 minutes left. The 13-point lead is significant. 
Interesting formation for the Irish. Boykin and Jones make that eye on the top. Jones comes in motion. It's Ian Book throwing with a flag down. It's Boykin out of bounds and incomplete. Let's see if that flag was on uh, the contact and perhaps a pick play that was run over there. Pass interference. Offense number 83. That penalty is declined. So the Irish denied on the two point conversion. The Claypool comes down. Not really. That is not offensive pass interference. I'm not sorry. Even close. No two point conversion either way. It's a 12 point Notre Dame lead. 22 to 10 with 11.04 left as the Irish. Under a little pressure, come back down the field and get the touchdown pass to the graduate student from Midlothian, Illinois, Nick Wisher, on the ground. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Visa. Everywhere you want to be. By Wendy's, the official hamburger of NCAA football. By Untuck It, shirts designed to be worn untucked, untuckit.com. And by G. Let you hear a little bit of trumpets under the dome in the main building here on campus. A tradition every Saturday right around noontime before a kickoff. Play the uh, alma mater, Notre Dame Our Mother, and the, the famed Notre Dame Victory March. I hear that song. I'm 10 years old listening to Lindsey Nelson and Notre Dame highlights. Yeah, absolutely. Jonathan Dorr has done a very good job with his last three kickoffs, kicking them uh, for touchbacks. This one will not be returned. All right, Wakefield, let it bounce. And once you let it bounce, it becomes a touchback. They've taken that rule to the NFL this year. Ball at the 25 for Ben. All right, time now for a sub above. Brought to you by Jersey Mike. It's a good job. I'll tell you, the Notre Dame secondary has done a great job on vertical route, staying underneath the route, on top of the perfect position, finding the ball, maintaining some body contact, great body position on all these vertical routes. Finally, forced the inside release, so now you're going to get your safety involved with the help because he went inside, turns into an interception. Vanderbilt needs to stay with some of the crossing routes. They've had better success with running guys across the field rather than vertical. Jersey Mike's above the rest. Get a good look at that Notre Dame secondary here against the Vanderbilt team. It's done a good job in the air. First down run. Sorry, blasting game. Got out of a tackle by Jalen Elliott. Got across the 35. And the pile ends with blasting game still going at the 39 yard line. And a first down run of 14. So Kareem lost uh, his contain there. And blasting game turns it to the outside. Now he gets a little stiff arm. Get off me. Better get off. Now this guy's not the slasher mover. This is your bull in a china closet here. He's just throwing people off, moving forward. Just gonna take six guys to knock them to the ground. From the 39, Kyle Shermer. Time gets to his tight end, Sam Dobbs. We'll have another first down. It's across midfield and still going into Notre Dame territory. At the 43 yard line, Brian Kelly was looking for a flag on the edge as we have an injured, injured Notre Dame player. Khalid Kareem down after the gain of 18. I would be dialing up my plays for my tight ends if I'm Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. They've had success. They haven't had a lot of success on the outside. This is play action boot. This is the easiest play in the book for a quarterback. Come out, your tight end blocks down for a half second, slips away. Nice easy throw and Kate does a great job of staying about getting all he can maybe a little face mask at the end. Kyle Shermer's 21 of 32 is pushing towards a 300 yard passing day. As Pinkney and Dobbs the tight ends have contributed to that. Inside run blessing game to the 41 yard line. We're talking about the numbers. Quarterback comparisons brought to you by Volkswagen. Wimbush 10 incompletions. Shermer 11. And with uh, Wimbush, you always look at the rushing yards to get his total impact on the game. This is second and eight. Good protection here for Shermer. That's been part of the story in this second half. It's incomplete. 
Chris Pierce was the intended receiver for Vandy. Okay, Julian Love had his hands all over him, and they're they're fighting all the way up the field, stayed in good body position. Those vertical routes are saying one on one on the outside, and Schirmer is really good at the timing of when his receiver puts the brakes on him, putting it right on him. But these defensive backs for Notre Dame have been right on that round. Third and eight, down 12, nine and a half to go. Would you call plays like you're in four down territory? Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially with the field goal kicking today hasn't been great. I'm looking for something going across the field. You got man coverage all across the board. Here's the slant, broken up, incomplete. Troy Pride Jr. covering for Elijah Lipscomb. No special teamer getting anywhere near the field right now. Let's see, Mason thinking about it for a second. So here. Troy Pride up here, he's been dealing with fade routes and upfield routes. All of a sudden, the slant, he's right on it. Gets a left arm in there to the ball. Doug, they play those routes really well. Uh, these DBs have shown that these first three games. A, a slant route is the most difficult one-on-one -on -one thing to stop because you're so worried about a vertical route. Todd White, the Super Bowl champ, Terry Joseph, the new safeties coach. Getting their guys done. Fourth and eight. Here comes pressure. Irish brings six. Sherber hit as he throws. Incomplete. Flagley. Flag comes from the back, but that is the official who's assigned to that receiver in DB. So while it looks late, it's the guy who's throwing it from 20 yards behind. It's supposed to. Pass interference. Defense number 27. 15 yard penalty. First down. I. I agree with this call 100%. The, the, the hand that fighting that's been going on is getting more and more physical as the game has gone on all these vertical routes. And Julian Love just doesn't let the receiver get out of his break. He corrected. It was on five. Troy Pride Jr. Oh, I'm sorry. They Troy called the Pride. wrong number and then they corrected it. Now Pierce is going to put the brakes on and fight back, and that left arm grabs as he's doing it. Exactly. I know it's minimal contact, but you're keeping that receiver from coming back to the ball. Terry's giving me the look down the line. What do you think, Terry? I think yes, I think yes. Yes. First and ten from the 26. Here's Sherman. Look at that quick slant. It is caught again by Lipscomb to the 21 yard line. Just think about it, such a key play. Think of the term that Terry brought up in the Michigan game. Did he material, materially restrict the receiver from coming back to get the ball? And would that hold up to that standard, Terry? Absolutely. Not playing the ball, material restriction clearly affected the receiver's ability to catch the football. As a so the fourth down by penalty keeps this drive going. As we dive under nine minutes left, Vanderbilt's had a lot of opportunities. Interception in the end zone. The ball dropped on a walk-in touchdown. They have no more margin for error down 12. Running to the left, it's Vaughn. Down to Anson. It's Keyshawn Vaughn inside the five. Coming to the end zone. There's a flag down as Vaughn's out inside the one. Maybe that space was created illegally. I think it's on Lipscomb down the field. Holding. Offense. Number 16. Two yard penalty. Second down. Boy, he was in great position, holding his block the whole way. Great job of just bouncing outside, no doubt about that. And then when you start to separate, they hold on. Just let him go. It's not going to affect, just you got to let go a second earlier. And always when they turn to break away. Mason taking a long look up at that in the screen. And then with the screen down to the sideline to the official. Such a big play for him. Oh, sure. Well, because uh, it's at the spot of the foul, it doesn't become second and ridiculously long here. It's at the 22 yard line. Second and six. Shermer asking for it and firing. Complete in traffic with Lipscomb. Dalen Hayes dropped off his defensive end spot. Joining Aloe Gilman, here comes another third down. Under eight minutes to go. Boy, with Dalen Hayes dropping like that, all of a sudden there's an extra defender in the area, and he turned that loose because he knew the window was tight. Third down and short. I don't know that you trust the run game here. I put it in my, my quarterback's hand. Going to the top, Clark Lee, walk on fullback at Vanderbilt, going up against his alma mater first time in his life. He's rooting against them. But his love of Notre Dame started as a kid growing up in Nashville. His dad brought him to a game here. Now can he beat his alma mater here? Big down, third and two. Sherber hits it, throws it, is caught. Picked in a big old tight end. Gonna get in there. Touchdown, Commodores. Man, what a throw hanging in there, Kyle Shermer. Vanderbilt.
Vanderbilt right back in the game. Pinkney at tight end slips his defender right away and is uncovered off the line of scrimmage. Coming off the line of scrimmage right at the field, so he's looking for the ball the whole time. Shermer knew he was going to be open, but had to wait until there was a, a clean window, and he's standing in the pocket. What a job of staying in the pocket, keeping his focus up the field, and waiting for it to happen. And Derek Mason, who sells belief often with this team, feels like he's got the group that's ready to make some noise this year. Big extra point knocked through by Riley Gay. And it's a five point game. Getting good here at South Bend. Seven and 22 to go. Kyle Shermer showing you that he does have that next level ability. So does his tight end finger. They connect for six. The margins five in South Bend. His dad, Pat Shermer, coaches the Giants. They've got Saquon Barkley against Ezekiel Elliott. You got Eli and Dak here. Good one. Cowboys Giants will start you with Football Night in America, 7 Eastern Time. Remember, Alan Chris with you at 8.20 Eastern Time. That's the new kickoff time. Game on Sunday Night Football here on NBC. Two touchdowns, last two possessions for Vanderbilt. Sherbert to Pinkney, the last one. Five-point game, half a quarter to go in South Bend. Riley Gay kick returnable. And here comes Michael Young from the two. Michael Young's got an edge. Michael Young passed one. Michael Young all the way out to midfield. Big time return. And he came very close to not being down, by the way. He fell on another Vandy player. But an outstanding return by Young of 49 yards. Still, uh, bodies from both teams there. The play kept going. Young wasn't sure if he was down. Because he had fallen on the body of a would be tackler, tried to keep his footing going, and then the melee ensued on the sideline. Looks like his knees down, makes it definitely on the side, but that's where he bounces up there for a second with his hand down. But he was clearly down. Perhaps he was going to celebrate. The Vandy guys didn't know for sure that he was down. They wrapped him up. No flags were thrown, but it's Notre Dame ball there on 49. But Doug, a big return from Young. There's no doubt about it. In the further, he took it up the middle first before busting out to the right and hitting the crease, which sets up that return. First kick return they've had all day. Brandon Wimbush back at it. Give inside Tony Jones Jr. First hundred yard rushing day of his career is added to with that first down carry. Seven minutes left. Doug, the identity of the Notre Dame offense was power running last year. If it's going to be that this year, this would be a drive where they'd like to show them. Yeah, it's a lot of multiple tight end sets, though, in their power running game as well. This year, it's more all the zone read stuff. Jones inside, squirts through. First down to the 40-yard line. Got a couple more. At 6.41, and the clock will start after the chain speed. From a Notre Dame standpoint, that's very encouraging that you come out when Vanderbilt probably knows you're going to try to run the ball at him, run the ball twice, pick up a first down, and get him on their heels to move the football. And that starts to set something up. You can go the play action off it. You can pull the ball on the zone read and let Brandon Winbush run with it. But you have to establish something to set up the big play. Jones out, Jafar Armstrong in now. Yeah. Just a bump at the mesh there. Winbush takes first down. Winbush inside the 25. Out of bounds with the 23. He knows it would have been better just go down inbounds there. But still a first down with 6'10 to go. If the uh, backfield action is a little cleaner, Brandon Wimbush gets to this hole a little quicker and he might be gone. A little bump and slowed it down, but you see the crease and he's elusive. And then he knows, ah, I could have stayed in bounds, keep the clock. It's a little restart anyway, Brandon. Outside of a couple of minutes left in that uh, back end of the fourth quarter. Keep the game along. Rules changed with that over the last couple of years. Here he goes again. Wimbush to the 18 yard line. This is the Brandon Wimbush offense. It's run the football, pull the ball, and run yourself. Have the extra blocker when the quarterback's running the ball, and then occasionally chuck the ball down the field. I give credit too to Chip Long and Brian Kelly. They said, We got to call plays to Brandon Wimbush's strengths, and the best Brandon Wimbush, which might not be throwing it as much as they might like, because when he runs, Sometimes the pass game becomes more effective. 
Five ten to go. Jones inside. Cameron Tidd, sophomore nose tackle out of Greenwood, Tennessee. With the stop, here comes a big third down. Field goal make it an eight-point game. To keep Vandy alive here. The Irish got off to a good start converting third downs, Doug, but they're only one of their last eight. Well, they get the look they want because they, Vanderbilt needs to stop that run. They get the one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, but it's Williams on Boykin, and Williams has done a great job out there. Third and four, Jones is the back. Do they throw? No, nope. design run for Wimbush, and Vandy is there, and he stops him a yard shy of the first down. He stretched out the ball. Doesn't get the first down, so it's fourth and one here on the left hash. 32-yard field goal makes it an eight-point game, and here comes the special teams unit. Yeah, I was, you know, I would be tempted to go for this one, but you need no. that eight-point lead. You need at least the eight-point lead, and this is where going for two Mm -hmm. Hurts them. This could make it a nine point lead, and you're secured with a two, two score lead if you would kick the extra point. Second all time leading scorer in Notre Dame history. Spent time at Harding Academy in Nashville. Part of his youth, 32 yards, Justin Yoon. That's moving to the right, and he missed it. And Vanderbilt's going to have a chance. Timing was a little off. Wasn't the best snap. But Yoon misses to the right. And the Commodores with belief with 3.39 to go in a five point game. Mitchell Kyle Sherman and his dad so often. Mom Jennifer was a swimmer at Michigan State. While dad is a football player for the Spartans. Mom has done so much over the years, not just with Kyle, but the three sisters as well. Their careers, you know, you have a coach as a husband or a dad. Pat Sherman spent so much time involved with his football teams. Mom's such a big part of the story. That's what Kyle was talking about this week. Mom is here and hanging on, hoping her son can engineer a big comeback drive to win the game. Vandy starts from their own 20. And on the ground, blessing game sneaks through. Mari will get about six yards or four yards. He'll mark the 24 with a knee down. Vandy's got all three timeouts. Will throw and throw complete out to the midfield strike for Pinkney, the tight end, a gain of 26. Troy Pride, the tackle. What a smart throw. It looked like Pinkney was wide open on this corner route, but in the last instant, he feels a defender out in the flat and drills it at him and stops him with the ball. It's Troy Pride out to the sideline, stops the receiver with the ball. Pinkney turns, catches it for a huge gain. Just a great feel. Yeah, really. They both do. They both do. They can play on Sundays. Pinkney over 100. Sherman over 300. Vandy in great position at midfield. 245 to go. Left side. Blasting game. The Irish defense heard from with Drew Tranquil. He's had a very big game. The two time captain of the Fighting Irish team. It's about time for one of the pass rushers from Notre Dame to turn loose and come up with a big play to make a stop. Since then, Vanderbilt's done a better job up front. And second and ten. Sherman throws. Oh, he almost had Lipscomb. He got behind Julian Love in coverage. Here comes third and ten. He oh, slipped ball. Love right off the line of scrimmage and then outside release. It just created a bad angle because Julian or because Lipscomb slipped a little bit. It was a tough angle to find the football. Derek Mason, the Vanderbilt coach, just sprinted down to the official on his sideline, screaming at the side judge for a call. It certainly wasn't at the point of the pass. Third down. Pressure coming, a hold. Sherman rolls out and has to bench it. Incomplete. The Irish came through with big pressure there. They had to grab Julian Aquara, who was busted through the middle. And here comes fourth down. Game wouldn't be over. Vandy has three timeouts. If Brian Kelly saw Aquara, 42, coming in from the edge. 
Kareem slips his man and comes pushing through. It's rushed out of the pocket. Vanderbilt. The first call time out of the half. Vanderbilt take that time out? Man, I know you want to get the right play. Let's look at this one more time. It's Kareem with a great push and flush on the quarterback. Doug, I know you want to get the right play here. Fourth and ten. I hear you need those timeouts to get the ball back in the punt. Mason's still looking for the ball from a couple of plays ago. I don't think he's going to get that call. Not two plays later. <laughs> Let's move forward. And I got to tell you here, you know, you got fourth and ten. Your game's on the line. You've just used a timeout. And now that you're down at two, it puts Notre Dame a rushing first down away from you. Ice in the game if you don't pick this up. It's, it's interesting clock management. You always want to say first things first, figure out later on, later on. By taking the timeout, you definitely have to go for this. It is only four to ten, so you can run your regular package. It's not like you're holding on the ball for people down the field. I, tell, I like number eight picking in the middle of the field, working an inside run. From the big receiver to the left, right over zero in the 50. To the right side for the tight end, the money guy, Pinkney. He's lined up on the end and ND. Notre Dame showing heat when they bring it. They bring four, pressure up the middle. Shermer's throw is incomplete. Looking for a flag and he throw. It was right in front of the Vanderbilt bench, which was all over the officiating crew during the timeout. And they get that flag, and that's the second pass interference on a fourth down that will keep a drive going. Defense, number eight. The ball replaced at the spot of the foul. First down. And that's Vaughn who just came in the game. With where this ball ended up, a missed ball is thrown down and in. He does the same thing. He's got his hands on him, and as he puts on the break, the left arm comes out with a hold. And that is definitely contact, definitely a call. The ball did land way to the inside and, and not real catchable, but that's a, that's a definite call. No doubt. So the drive stays alive. The Irish 37. Plenty of time to run it. With over two minutes left, and inside of the 34-yard line. With the blessing game. I keep thinking they're going to go to Pinkney in this crucial situation, but what they've been doing with him is actually keeping him in the pass protection and maxing out the protection. So that he that was over here in the slot with the freshman Houston Griffith covering it. They run to that side again. Blessing game gets hit hard. Tony and Elliott, the linebacker, and the safety with the play. The tumbling clock here, 90 seconds to go, third down coming up. Third and four. Oh, one thing, these Notre Dame games have been close this year. There's <laughs> a new guy, man coverage. Third and four, slam is incomplete. With the flex off of Lipscomb. Troy Pride there on the coverage. Well placed ball, and we're back down to fourth down again. All right, don't get loud here. Here comes fourth and four. I put 16. Let's him in the slot. Give him a double. Yeah, where he can move either way, in or out, rather than put him out wide. Two-way go. Yeah, two-way go. There you go. He's a little bit in a bunch look now. Here he is, right here. Hard, bunch look. Harder to get man coverage on. Fourth and four. Four options to throw. Shermer fires and is caught. Sensation drop. Incomplete. Lipscomb had it. Couldn't secure it as he came to the ground. Irish take over with a minute seven to go. Oh, they were that close to making the play. Jalen Elliott back there again. Germer put it in a tough spot straight over his head. He went up, got both hands on it. Elliott stays after him, and the body wow. landing on the ball knocks it out. 107 left. Vandy has two timeouts. Irish ball leading by five, and Vandy was that close.
So Elijah Lipscomb has 11 catches. The 12th was so close, Doug, but instead it's an Notre ball. Great design. Put him in a bunch look. He's a little off the ball. He creates leverage for him. He's got a defender now on his inside. He's running an outbreaking route to the corner. He gets to the top of his stem. Now, freeze it. Put the ball over in here to the outside. Just flatten him out. The ball's thrown straight over his head. Not a bad throw at all. But it's straight over his head. Makes it a little more difficult. He goes up, makes a great catch on the ball. But in landing to the ground, it comes out. Jalen Elliott makes the play on the end with the hit. If managed properly, Notre Dame doesn't pick up a first down. Fourth down snap will come with 10 seconds left, or thereabouts. Here's the Tony Jones Jr. run. Timeout taken by Vandy at 102. Commodores have one timeout left, and they'd get the ball back with more time if they didn't use that timeout at midfield before that fourth down earlier. So run, run situation, maximize the clock, and then either kick it away or get a first down and end the game. You know, just great extension, body control, spinning his body, going up strong, grabbing it with his hands, and Elliott just staying after him. Staying after him, getting the hand in there, and then the force of him falling on the ball on the ground squirts it out. Shermer's been great all day long, and that was a very good throw. I'm not criticizing the throw. It could have been a little to the outside, would have made it a little easier on his receiver. But he's been phenomenal in the pocket, and Elliott's staying after him. But the, the two interceptions last week, and we were talking to him about that. I said, did you get a chance to return it? He's like, I don't know. I was so hyper. I didn't see. Everything was blurry. I couldn't take off and run. He's been a big part of this second game. Well, Loie Gilman and Jalen Elliott, the two safeties, have made big plays for the Irish. Now, was that a big play made by a defender? No, it was a, a catch that was made. He just couldn't survive the ground. But as you said, Elliott kept going. At least his pressure, his body weight, his hand over there near the ball made it tougher for the receiver Lipscomb to come down with yeah, just don't quit on the play you stay after it you scrape you claw whatever you can to disrupt so second down minute two to go Tony Jones Jr's the back the Irish throw all three tight ends into the boundary here and Jones will run right up into that Vandy defensive front timeout will be taken with 58 seconds left we have third down coming up and we remind you that we are back here after the Irish go to Wake Forest to play the Demon Deacons next Saturday in two weeks in prime time. For what could be a top 10 matchup. It is for the moment. Stanford beat UC Davis today 30 to 10. No Bryce Love in that game, but KJ Costello and Arcega Whiteside. JJ Arcega Whiteside, their outstanding receiver, hooked up a couple of times. Third and Stanford men talking about good football games against great institutions. We've seen that over the years. Stanford's had the better of play of late, they've been close. A chance to see Bryce Love against this Notre Dame defense. Both teams have tests next week as the Irish go to Winston Salem to play Wake. Stanford goes to Eugene to play Oregon on Saturday evening. But if both survive that and the Irish close this game out, then we'll have a top 10 matchup in prime time two weeks from tonight here on NBC. Brian Kelly talking with Brian Poley and the special teams coach about how do you want to handle this if there's a punt coming up here in the closing seconds. You want to just punt it all the way downfield. How do you want to cover it and all that stuff? Brock Wright, the fullback, comes in. It's third down and four. A four-yard run wins the game. And Bush it doesn't hand off. He's just going to keep it. There's nowhere to go. He kills some time, gives some ground, and the play clock resets. So that snap will come. I missed by a second. Snap's going to come at 11 <laughs> seconds, not 10. Not too bad. Not too bad. If you were closer to your end zone, you would be taking a safety running around in the end zone. This far away, it's a dangerous yeah. play. Yeah. 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 Five's, da five's dangerous with a safety. Because five would then get it to three, and then a field goal could tie you on a one play downfield. So they would run the clock out on this last yeah, They play. would run it out, run to the back, run to the back, and take it out to the end. That's if he's going to go for the end zone. But what happens if you turn and run for the end zone and trip and fall? I just I don't like it I, if, if you were backed up and you were down around the 15 to 10 then I have no problem with it when you're out this far you get, I, se secure your punt team punt the ball away and this is a kick it as far as you can for you lip readers there 12 seconds remaining and it has been uh, kicked far by Newsom today Tyler has averaged 58 8 on his four punts so far. You know, it's a little scary. I mean, Wimbush lost 
10 to 12, gave away 10 yes, to 12 yards on that. So you, that's what gets you thinking. Are they trying to work towards the end zone for the safety? But they're still going to line up and punt this football. And it doesn't hurt to have your guys take a holding penalty up front. Everybody grab your guy, hold it. If you have to re-kick, then we'll Clock runs down. The NFL actually changed that rule. Multiple players are doing that with intent. Then the clock will be changed. It's changing college as well this year, too. So all right, never mind, coach. No, no, no. I'm they, outdated. They, they, they out they they outfought the, the uh, smart thinkers. Vanderbilt's gonna come after this, of course. Tyler Newsom to kick it. Trey Ellis is back. Newsom gets rid of it and hits an absolute rocket. Oh, what a kick. 63 when the chips were down to the five. Second mark, Tyler Newsom. Job well done. Why is your punter a captain? Here's why. 63. Got a fair catch it. Back in zone 10. When they said kick it as far as you can. He doesn't get that opportunity too often. Flutie, give a kicker some love there. Give that punter some Absolutely. love. He's an athlete. All right, I've seen him on the practice field. He's an athlete. He averaged 59.6 on his five punts this afternoon. Paul Evans, our stat man, a great number there. All right. Throw it short and start lateral. The band is not on the field. There is five seconds left, and here's the end of the game. Kyle Shermer rolling, throwing it. It's complete. It's caught first by Bowler. Bowler flips it back to Bowling Game. We actually got to Pickney. It's still alive as uh, Bowling Game knocked the man off the ball. The offensive line is down. Della Ripa threw it up in the air. The Irish come away with it and end the game. Some were interested in a pickup and a touchdown for Notre Dame. In fact, it was just recovered. The game is over, and the Irish have defeated Vanderbilt by five. 22 to 17. So Notre Dame has won three games this year by seven, by eight, by five. And we go to Catherine with the 3 0 head coach of the Irish. Coach, back to back weeks now. It you your team takes it right up to the end of the game. What was your biggest takeaway from your group today? Oh, we played hard. I'm proud of our guys. Um, you know, competed for four quarters. Um, and, you know, obviously, from my perspective, we got to turn field goals into touchdowns. Um, Oh, we played hard. I'm proud. Again, I want my guys to play hard, played physical. They did that. Vanderbilt, you know, played hard and played physical. And everybody that comes into Notre Dame Stadium gives us a heck of a fight. Our kids were up for it today. And, uh, you know, we did a good job running the football, bounce back from not playing physical last week to playing, uh, you know, an SEC team that has some, some good players. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. Mike? All right, it's a week for us next week. Then Stanford and then Virginia Tech for the Irish. Vandy's got South Carolina. I think this team will do better in the SEC this year. More from Brian Kelly. You can hear that with his press conference at NBCSports.com. Sunday Night Football tomorrow night. But Giants and the Cowboys, 7 Eastern time with football night. Kicks at 820 Eastern. Next, the news for most of you except for the West Coast. Stanford Notre Dame in two weeks here on NBC with Doug Flutie, Catherine Tappan, Chris Sims, Terry McCauley, our producer Rob Hyland, our director Pierre Moose, and our team, Mike Tarifa. Thanks for watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Visa.